sometimes, man. Yeah, it's true. Sometimes laughter is the best cure, isn't it? Hundred percent, man. <laughs> it's not that deep. Man said this. <laughs> we live. We've been live for a bit. We live, innit? Whoa! We have David James in the building. Round of applause. I really David! <laughs> Finally! Finally! Yeah, we've been meaning to like, do this with you for, for ages. Yeah, man. How you been? Yeah, good. <laughs> I'm, on a dry, I'm on a dry January. So I'm really good. So can you uh, just... Oh, you haven't, you haven't been drinking? No, man. Do you usually do that or...? Well, dry January, first time ever. Yeah? Yeah. So what is it? No alcohol whatsoever? No, nothing? Yeah, because you know what, like Christmas and all that festive period, you know? It gets so, a bit too festive. Gets a little bit too festive. So uh, dry January, trying to keep fit. Got a big game coming up. Are you... Games. What game? Christian Carambao. He's got a... Serious? Top, yeah, man. He's got, yeah, he's got a thing in, uh, in Geneva in February, so... That's how <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so something like that. Man, you you've obviously been you've had a very interesting career. Thank you. Interesting. And interesting. Uh, I'd say that's, that's one way of describing it. Yeah. Oh yeah, probably not prolific. You were um, most clean sheets in the prem until obviously Petr Cech came around. Yeah. Did that bother you at all? Well, I was getting over it till now. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. No, Pet's a ledge. Complete, yeah, in it. but I mean, you're a legend as well. No, this, this guy, yeah, legend. this guy was, uh, he's a legend. Speak, I think he speaks five languages. Hmm. Learned different languages, speak to different defenders. That's mad. That's yeah. mad effort, but well, that's attention yeah. to detail. Do you yeah. think keepers in general, because I'm a keeper as well, we are all a bit on the on the spectrum, on a bit of a strange side of, of thinking and being? I think you'd have to ask my friends that. Huh? What do you think? <laughs> Yeah, no, no comment. It's different than your usual footballer, David. One time in, in Milan, David filmed a wall for approximately 47 seconds when we were in a car. And he just filmed a wall. He then watched it back and said, oh, that's nice. And then deleted it. This was by far one of the weirdest things I've ever seen in my life. I would have to agree with David. I should have kept it, man. should have kept it. should have kept it. Some, kept some, it nice, there's some nice stuff on that wall. Yeah, yeah. I've had filmed a war. Do I think answering your question? Yeah. Do I think okay. I think the the position dictates that you're going to be slightly different because you're you're on your own in the team. If that makes sense, mm. in that paradoxical situation. Mm. You wear different clothing, learn different skills. Mm. Mm. Do you so, think it's also left for people that don't mind a lot of pressure? Because if a striker loses the ball, defense, midfield, goalkeeper, mm. midfielder, defense, goalkeeper. The fans, they got the goalkeeper. If the goalkeeper makes a mistake, you're a goal down. Yeah. Yeah, only happened a couple of times in my career, though, fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, did but they yeah. used to call you at Liverpool again? Uh, England's number one? Oh, no, no. <laughs> For like yeah. six months? There was a couple of things. Calamity right? James was a Calamity James. Yeah. You had a couple Calam calamities. But I mean, it's, yeah. it's part of it the happens. game. It How happens. do you deal with it when, when you do have a, a bit of an error in goal? The, well... Back in the day, I have to say, because the world's changed now. A little yeah, bit. The world's changed. changed. In the sense that, yeah, there's more people watching games and if a goalkeeper makes a mistake, arguably there's more people to see it. Mm. But also there's more people to like you and sort of get you out of the trouble. Whereas back in the day, it was newspapers and that was it. 100%. And, and arguably only a few newspapers. So once they started getting on you, that was like the whole, everyone was on, against you. Mm. Um, support networks, I mean, again, you got, I mean, we, we didn't watch... We didn't watch games back after match, so we play a game. Whatever happened, happened, and that was it. Mm. Whereas now you would sit down with your analysis guy, your coaches, you go through it on video. Literally at half time, if you did something in the first half, you're sat there in the change room at half time, going through it. Whereas before, it was, hang on a minute, what happened there? You might watch match of the day at night, mm. and they might have a rerun on Sky. But other than that, you didn't see anything. So you're kind of dealing with other people's opinions rather than being able to process yourself. So, yeah. Is that difficult though? Because like you said, there was no balance. At least today, if a goalkeeper makes a mistake, there'll be some type of fans that will give something to leverage the argument, like give your best bits as well as some of your Well, worst. everybody has a voice now. Yeah, I think that was different. Back then it was kind of the, you know, the newspapers or TV had the only voice. Mm. Was it more intense? Was that very difficult to deal with though? Especially if you made a goalkeeping error, you know you've messed up. 
I'm sure everyone in the stadium knows you messed up and then the next day you've got to pick up the paper or watch Match of the Day <laughs> or Sky Sports. They're going to remind you you messed up. Yeah. There was a, there was, I was quoted on it that I was going through a bit of a bad patch. And I said, yeah, it's not very nice when you're walking into Tesco's and the woman at the till is thinking dodgy goalie. And I had a friend go to, the, uh, go to Tesco's after I'd said it and they went, tell Dave we still love him. And it was like, oh, oh okay, cool, right. So again, sort of the, the feedback was always biased towards the reporting side of things, if you like, rather than uh, what arguably what the public wanted. Um, yeah. But that's the way it was. And that, and that was an improvement on years before. So, you know, the, the natural progression of of technology and whatever else gives different players a different experience. And for some now, arguably, the fact that everybody could see it is more pressurised than what we mm-hmm. had. And you go with social media as well, which is just the second after your mistake. It's it's everywhere. You're a meme. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You weren't, obviously, yeah. Maybe it's lucky that you didn't have that meme culture as well back in the day. But there is another side to it that when you know that everybody's seeing it in that sense and commenting on it, mm. then you are sort of arguably in more need to rectify the problem. Mm. And someone might identify when you've got three reporters reporting on your games and for argument's sake they don't like you, then they're always going to say bad things. Mm. No one's going to give you the balance where you turn around and say, actually, this is a problem. And you know what social media is like. There's a lot of people like yourselves who are educated enough in the game to be able to identify certain aspects of it. And if you comment on it and someone mm. sees it, then it's like, hang on, yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, I talk about goalkeepers being peculiar. I, I like to analyse different things. Like I look at a player's bum. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm kind of, I love football, yeah. but I do like the peculiar side of it. I like fans, I like flares. Do you know what I mean? I like limbs. Well, like I when a, when a team man. scores, yeah, yeah, and then you know when there's the limbs flying everywhere okay. in the stands. I like that aspect of football. The the kind I don't know how to explain it, but I like looking I'll at different. It. It's I'll not just it. about the result and the team. It's about these kind of side angles and uh, I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. You, do when I see off. limbs, I get I'm like, yeah, that's amazing. That energy of so many people going crazy. Well, I was at the Champions League final, mm. well, and I was when the final whistle went. I put it on social media before I ever saw it but rather than looking at the pitch I was focused on the fans because yeah, you want to yeah. see that reaction, that reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm sure we could get on to it so I want to bring it up VAR Ooh. and how that instant moment of emotion is being suppressed because when that final whistle goes the game's over <coughs> Liverpool fans go mad and then you're, like, you're saying limbs I mean it's from a distance but you see the movement it's the like movement they are unbridled enjoyment so now people score you see players going hang on wait wait let's wait yeah. for the VAR and it's like hang on a minute what, what happens to that bit where the guy wants to rip his shirt off you don't mm. rip it off for 30 you seconds you can't rip his shirt off now look at that <laughs> no, but even so he's like but you like, know, I'll rip it off after VAR. Maybe it's given double. But is it like double limbs? <laughs> is it like you have a celebration and then when it's VAR confirms that you have another one? Is it, could you say that maybe it's two in one? That could be the evolution of the goal celebration. I think that's horrible. So you I celebrate twice. It's kind of horrible. I'm trying to save it, but it's, it's not the same, is it? You can't save. It's, it's not, not, the, not the, same. the same. No, 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 no. And you don't want to sound like a golden oldie, but even down to taking your top off, like bro, that's I ridiculous. remember Ravinelli '96. When he scored a hat trick against Liverpool, so like this. he scored a hat trick against Liverpool, and he's his time time debut. Third, oh, third goal. I know, I know. But Vuj, this guy was synonymous for just getting his top, throwing it over, and even if you wasn't a Borough fan, you just wanted to see him do it, just so you could do it yeah. in your house as well. And then parts of enjoyment that the players have have been stripped, and yeah. then you're doing the same thing for the fans. So, for example, a goal goes in. And your instant reaction is to celebrate. But now, instead of you having to look at the linesman, you've actually got to pause and wait for about 35 seconds mm. while some guys look at some TVs in a room. I just think it's really like, a, like in curries, you know, you've got all the TVs. <laughs> yeah, it's just exactly. <laughs> Samsung's everywhere. <laughs> oh, everyone's just on Facebook and Twitter. It's just, no, I think, it, I think it's bad. So you're not a fan of VAR yourself? I'm, in principle, I'm a fan of VAR. Hmm. Because they, what they're trying to do is improve the integrity of the game. Mm. And in certain areas where mistakes have been made, the only way of rectifying it is by using VAR. However, when, and I don't know, I, I haven't watched every game this season. Um, I haven't seen every VAR decision, VAR decision over offside. But has anyone been level? I can't remember. No one's level. Know. They're always onside or offside. Mm. And what, given they're yeah. talking about a pixel, which is probably about that wide <laughs> Pixels in, in are, real terms. Yeah, even less. 
Yeah, it's horrible. then you've got the, a margin of error where people could be mm. kind of next to each other. But it always seems they find someone onside or offside rather than saying level. Because in the law, is level is onside. That's yeah. offside. Is that offside? Can you That's score with your... Well, can you score so with your... If you're can you there, score with the hair? Is that offside? I don't know. I don't can know you imagine someone getting punished arm? for having a ponytail? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like Emmanuel that... Petit trying to do an overhead kick and all of a sudden <laughs> it discounts because his ponytail was offside. Like that would be... Devastating. Mm. Oh. Oh, I, just, I just don't think you should make this game perfect. I think the beauty in it is the imperfection. I agree. Is sometimes the mistakes. Is sometimes the mm. Frank Lampard story of what would have happened if he you know, had the goal. No, 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 no. That's, that's, that, yeah, but that's different. That's not VAR. Mm. That is the ball crossing the line. Goal line technology. Yeah, but we it, is, it is a dichotomy. True, it's either in or it's out. And no one has to make a decision. Mm. The technology does it. This. But DJ, that is now making it in the balance of life fair because in the 1966 World Cup, one of the England goals shouldn't have counted. Oh, that was black and white. Cathode ray TV. It was a bit blurry. I'm sure it was over the line. Frank Lampard scores a goal. It doesn't count. I just think that is the balance of life. But maybe VAR will balance it out as well. Eventually, you'll get some, you won't get some. So you're watching NFL. No, I think... It is a bit NFL-ish, isn't it? Yeah, but I think the, the... the idea that humans can make mistakes and humans referee the game, mm. then the VAR bit becomes mm. too much of a problem mm. because they're still making mistakes, but someone else is making a mistake. Mm. So all you're doing is saying, I didn't get that right. You you can get it wrong now as well. It's getting very matrixy, isn't it? But it takes time. Do you reckon yeah. you should have now VAR for the VAR? So we have like Kalina, an old school ref in another room. Who goes, <laughs> Let me just check the VAR. Goes to the <laughs> supreme leader of VAR. <laughs> There was a. There was a. It's also an office in America. Like, no, let me just take a look. I just think it's silly. There was, there was a. There was a good, good point made by a friend of mine on a TV channel in India, and he he suggested that there should be like a bit like NFL three challenges. Oh, like so oh, like when the goal Wimbledon. goes in, Firmino against was it Southampton? I can't remember mm. early on in the season. Mm. Um, Southampton go right. We're going to challenge it. Yeah, he's onside, or mm. he's, if he's onside, then. Southampton lose a challenge, Liverpool get a goal, yeah. which has already been given. Yeah. If it's been given offside and Liverpool challenge it, do you know what I mean? But mm. You only get three challenges. Yeah, like, yeah maybe. Yeah. But you can, yeah, that's a shout. I kind of like that. I kind of agree. Then, yeah. Because then it's up to the, I mean, the crowd will be there and it, uh, arguably you're encourage, encouraging other people to get involved because uh, it's like challenge, challenge, challenge. Uh, I was at Stevenage last night watching a game. Guy's been given, there's three disallowed goals. And you're thinking, this is Premier League, that's three VAR decisions. Mm. Which is another five minutes on top of the game. It takes true. the fluidity out of the game. I think that's what we like about the game. The fluidity mm. is just how fluid it is. And then when it's half time, you sort of you recap for fifteen minutes, and then you get ready for the second. Half. Nowadays, you're recapping pff, every twelve minutes. There's a VAR decision, and you can sit down yeah. and have a get a you know get a tea, get a top. It's just for me very annoying. I just want to sit down, watch mm. a game, enjoy it, and afterwards, if any bad things happen, it seems like it's here to stay, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's gonna be it's like AI. AI. Yeah, yeah. Like AI. I think I think just change it. What are you saying AI. What do you think of AI? Like artificial intelligence. <laughs> I mean, that's that's coming. Coming. It's here. It's already here. It's pretty much a self-driving cars, VAR, the phone unlocks with VR. Yeah, you know, it used to be in like you know that's like you know like Spy Kids and shit, and you used to have like Spy Kids, and that would be something in Spy Kids, and now we have it on our phones. Yeah. So we're getting into that kind of dystopian era. It seems like. It's. How are you there. finding that? What do you reckon? Do you have any opinions on that? Listen, the technology is going to get more advanced. Yeah. Yeah. Just turn all your things off. Joking. That's what I do. <laughs> do you? <laughs> turn <laughs> everything off on my phone. The only trouble is when I want to get on something, I've got to turn it back on again. Uh, Pain in the back so what, mobile data off, everything off? Everything. Mm, camera fun. unblocked, sellotape over the camera on the MacBook. I haven't no, done no, that. no. I've, I've, I've done it on my laptop. Mm. Yeah. Can you show Locations. my laptop, please? Huh? Show my laptop, please. I mean, um, no, just, just like it. the reason we love you, David. Obviously, you've had a fantastic well, footballing career. Yeah, but you're just you're char- you're a character. You're charismatic, and we need. I feel like football needs more characters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you said you were in India. Obviously, you did your um, presenting. Yeah, but you were player coach as well. I was the Karela Tigers. Karela Tigers. Is that what the name well, was? The elephants, but Karela Blasters. Karela Blasters. <laughs> yeah. How was that? How did you find India? Well, 2014 went out first, played player manager, mm. got to the final, lost one nil. Serious? Oh man! What, like a cup? Or the 94th league? minute, smallest guy in the field, header, bang. <laughs> Past you, oh, devoted. Past you. Well, there was other players on the field as well, right? 
<laughs> you were in goal. <laughs> Where are the players on the he field? I mean, look, the guy, like, he, got, he, he didn't even rise. He had a, anyway. And you tough. lost the game. We lost. But it, we, it was it was an achievement because we, um, it was the first season of the ISL, the Indian Super League. Hmm. It was an adventure. Um, Who yeah. else went at the we time? Had, we, listen, we had 70,000 fans at our last oh, time game. That's oh, really good. Yeah. Really good. Mm, not bad. <laughs> I, just, I just didn't expect that. I just thought, you know, sometimes I'm ignorant to it. So I just think maybe if you go to certain countries where football's not that popular, no one's going to turn up. 70k though. 70k, yeah. That's a mad thing. Yeah. It was, I've never played in a game so loud. Mm. It was because I don't know about if, if you understand the Indian culture, especially around sporting events. Uh, it's changed now, okay, uh, believe me. But the back then, <clears throat> we would walk into the stadium. And you look around, it was an old cricket ground. So you'd have these little drum cores. Mm. And they would just sit there, just dun, 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 two an hour, an hour and a half before the game, bang, 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 bang. And it would carry on all the way through the game. My so when Lord. things happened, you know, score a goal, it would just get nuts. And I'd be, I stood there and I was like, I, I've never experienced this before. I've experienced loud crowds, as you can imagine, mm. but non stop for two hours. Crazy. That's like Flamengo fans. Yeah, the Flamengo. Flamengo yeah, Jesus, different. they were they didn't stop yeah. for the whole game. The whole, why, why do you reckon it's so much more uh, passionate? It seems in places like India, in in Brazil, where football is quite prominent and quite big, in opposed to VAR England. VAR England. Um, I, th- I mean, India. India. I, I love the country. I keep, I keep going back there. Um, football isn't the big sport in India. Mm. I think someone said to me um, when I was working on TV there that for the, I think the World Cup opening ceremony, was it? They got 40 million viewers. And for the T20, they get 360 million viewers. Oh, wow. This is crazy, bro. Damn. Yeah. It's kind of, the you know, the balance is always with, That's intense. with cricket. Mm. Um, a, famous, a famous footballer can walk down the street and most people, actually pretty much everyone won't know who they are. Mm. Serious. Whereas a cricketer doesn't walk down the street because everyone knows who he is. Mm-hmm. That's my yeah, cricketers could walk through here all day because I would, <laughs> I probably have walked past so many cricketers in my life. I'm not known nothing. A footballer. We had uh, Sachin Tendulkar was our owner. Mm. So he, the season one, um, we had the opening ceremony in uh, Calcutta. So we've all met up, and I had to. We were playing the next day, but we had to go to this, or I had to go to this opening ceremony. And a uh, load of Bollywood stars. Not that I knew anyone. So the teams one by one would walk on captain and superstar. Sixty, I think it's about forty, fifty thousand people at a cold cut stadium, mm. Salt, uh, real Salt Lake Stadium. Anyway, Bollywood stars walk out, and I'm, I'm like, why are we last? To myself, I wasn't telling anyone. Else. <laughs> anyway, we walk out, the whole place goes mental. Because it's Sachin Tendulkar, isn't it? Mm. All these fans from Kolkata are basically wow. screaming at him. And I was like, this guy's popular, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite popular here. Didn't realise at 19, I think he was the India won the Cricket World Cup. He scored 200. Mm. Instant legend. That's if a you're in a cricket, I'm not legend. even in the cricket, and that was the other one. Yeah, no, no. And one of the nicest blokes I've ever met in my life. Yeah. Next to Vuj. They throw the They throw the ball weird sometimes. The crickets, yeah. I don't get like, And then, like the guy does that. I always go on about it. It just doesn't make sense. And then he just hits it, hits his shin, and then they're like, Oy. and then they just carry on. Do you I, know don't what get, I don't get when they, you know, it's like, an interesting they, sport. They, but they say like, we like, need go. twelve runs from the last four balls or something, mm. and they say yeah, they can do it. Well, why don't they do that all the time? <laughs> Why aren't the scores like one thousand instead of two hundred? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I think of cricket. <laughs> Average score for England, 987. <laughs> in a one-day test. No, I get what you mean. Yeah, why don't they just max it out? But that's what I mean. There must be some sort of like technical side where they're, they're I don't know, you're trying yeah, to not, not you know, I'm sure there's more to get it. Get the right? LBW, <laughs> yeah. you know. And like, and they should make it like, instead of a six, they should be an eight, you know, like on a rim of the stand. If you can get it in the top tier, oh, get an eight. you get like eight. <laughs> Rewriting the rules of cricket. <laughs> it makes it exciting though. Yeah. Gives you more objectives. Little man. goals maybe around the pitch. So if you get it in the goal, you get mm. an extra point. How you been though, man? How's life and everything? 
Yeah, good. Yeah. Good, yeah. Uh, I did that dancing thing. Oh, yeah, how was that? What dancing thing? On oh, nice. You done dancing on ice? Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm, <laughs> I'm so glad when we're messing with each other, you're really paying attention to what I'm talking about. But anyway. No, no what was it? Strictly, yeah. I don't, the programs, it's all the same strictly program to me. No, well, no, one's on ice. Strictly one's, on ice. One's on the dance floor, but yeah. Um, no, so I did that last year and kind of just stopped doing everything because I mm. thought I might get to the final. <laughs> final. Um, what happened? The first thing, what right? happened? Yeah. Did you get to the final? I was at the final. Oh, so you didn't get to the final. <laughs> no. <laughs> a bit like Champions League. You didn't get in there either, but I've been to a few finals. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we did that, and then I basically just sort of stopped off, stopped everything until New Year. Mm. Been doing a lot of painting. Okay. How's the painting going? Let's, let's, uh, the window, David, open the window, the, the food's here for us. I can't open that window. Oh, you can't? That it, window? It's too open. Oh, Which one? Yeah. That pause, one. pause, delivery. Now this is the classic, we have to do this every show. Okay. We've ordered the food beforehand so people don't complain. Sometimes we, we get the food and last last week I was a bit erratic with the food delivery. So no. I've ordered beforehand. Yeah. So it's a bit easier to come through the window. Yeah. It's lit. Yeah, this is a, yeah. It doesn't happen everywhere, but. Oh. Hi mate, how are you? <laughs> yeah, I like this. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's organic, isn't it? We oh, don't really. That's a lot. Yeah. Do you that one there for me? Thank you. Oh, yeah, we didn't. I didn't really plan this chat with you either. Bro. We just kind of go with it. Have a nice one. Yeah, thank you, boss. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? You make music. <laughs> It hey, is true. Um, Uber, Uber Eats thing, isn't it? But yeah, so you were dancing. And that's then, good. Yeah. That's, that's good, isn't it? I might try that. Next time I order a delivery, just open the front window. <laughs> it's lit. I don't have to go to the door. Have you got Patron XO there? Is that the coffee one, yeah? Yeah, would you like oh, some? No, thank you. Dry January, isn't it? Dry January. That's one of the reasons why. Mate, I yeah. think that is a dry January. You like a drink, isn't it? I appreciate drinks. You appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. We've been with you in a few situations where... Anyway, we're... getting back to what we were talking about before. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're... Okay. Painting. Getting back. All right, all right. Back to... Get painting, yes. You brought this in. Okay. And I just... I'm very honoured <gasps> and gassed that you painted me in the Red Star Belgrade... No, in a Red Star Belgrade shirt from 1963... That, that 60s? It is a 60s, I believe. And then it's okay. it's based on Red Star beating Liverpool in the Champions League. Yes. Not Champions League, the, the Europe, European, Europe, Cup. European Cup. And it's me with my classic pose in the Anfield changing room wearing a Red Star shirt. And it's a really cool painting. Thank I mean, you. yeah, you did, you did a really good job. Thank and you. And I was very, very honoured that you did this. And yeah, thank you. It's really appreciated. Do you know something else about the painting, which yeah. is a little bit interesting? Go on. It was taken from the Wembley Cup. The, the image, uh, and do you know who was sat there? Was it Stevie G? Yeah. Bloody hell. You played with Stevie G? I have. We yeah. both have. Oh, yeah, was oh there. you were there. You were there. there. <laughs> Even I forgot. We need to send him a photo of you. He said he'll do one of you as well. He's no way. Don't that. guess me. Huh? Oh, thank you. I'm going to make my whole way into like, the gallery. Let's put loads of art there, so I would love to put but, a picture of me. Drawn by David G. There just That's isn't crazy. many footballers that... I guess their mind goes into painting and other creative activities. Or is there? Is there loads of footballers that Do you know anyone there? that paints? Uh, there's, there's a few. I think there's a few. There, there must be a few that paint. Um, the thing is, I, I can't. I have so much. When I say I have so much time, I don't. I cannot sit or still and do nothing. Really? Yeah. Can't go on holiday and sit on the beach. Can't think of anything worse. <laughs> so your mind is very active. Hmm. Not DJing. I mean, readings. Readings, all right. I'm not the best reader, but read a book every now and again. But painting, DJing, gym, <laughs> life after football. Yeah. No, th this was this was constant. Yeah. Just I have to do something. Mm. Is that do you reckon that because you was like a footballer, you had a set regime where your life was structured to a certain extent, and then football ends, and then it kind of ends that structure as well is it difficult to adapt and then you find yourself just sort of going from thing to no, thing it was always, I think it was always the same doing something I mean when, okay. when I was in Liverpool I, I would literally go home and DJ serious <laughs> yeah man I was doing it at Watford I, I would get me turntables out Watford and, 
literally record everything and then drive in the next day and I'll be like, yeah, that mix was a bit out. Sure, maybe it's... And I'd be analysing my mixes. What music? Was it predominantly? Started off hip hop, um, then got into a bit of jungle, a bit of Chicago house, drum and bass, Thank you. yeah, trance, deep house. Mm. Mm. Lands in like classical house. music. Yeah, I used to play the cello when I was a kid, so I, classical music. Mm. So everything really. But I have to, yeah, just have to do something. I can't be sat there doing nothing. Yeah. Are you a meditator? Are you, are you, you went to India? Like did, you, did you ever go into the spiritual side of things? No. No. <laughs> I love you so no. much, bro. Why don't you start a YouTube channel? Yeah. I would actually watch it. I would it watch it as well. 100%. No, yoga was good. He's getting really stretchy and then fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think David James should just be doing loads of regular stuff and just giving social commentary on it? I think that would be hilarious. And not just BT. I know you've got a job on BT and you commentate the football. And Had. Oh, had. Don't work with them anymore. How come? Uh, you stopped. I went to India. Yeah. Say that again? Because I went to India. Oh, because you went to India? Yeah. You just left? Oh. That's deep. I don't know where we've been for the last few years, but it's like, yeah. Oh, where? Yeah. Yeah. Since, do you know what? It all changed after that Wembley Cup. Well, you forgot you played with Stevie G. Yeah, you played as well. As well, you that's what it was. You met Stevie G, and all of a sudden, I wow, became well, I became that's... insignificant. It was pretty cool. Even though, even when no, nah, do you know what you two no. made me laugh? You, uh, I remember in Milan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what with the string? We string. string. I, I didn't bring any string with me. <laughs> do you know what? I, I I don't see so much string around here. Milan there was, was guys string selling paper. string on the streets of Milan. <laughs> And they tried to put this string on your hand, basically, and trap you, so you have to buy the string. Yeah. And every time we'd see string, Dave would go, string, string. And then, <laughs> and then I would send, if I see string on the street, I'd take a photo and send yeah. it to David, and he'd do the same. And then he, you called, oh, you ca that. started calling me string. String. You uh, are in my phone string. as string. Exactly. It's just, Rude string. This relationship makes absolutely... <laughs> No sense. I think you drew a picture of string. And I feel like even even in this conversation, we've obviously touched on amazing painting, a bit of football. We yeah. haven't gotten to the David James that we have managed to meet. I can we, can I just go back to Milan? Yes, you can. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This this guy, which camera are I looking at? I'm looking at all of them. Right. Anyway. So it was I'm trying to think which final it was now. Uh Real Madrid was, um, Atletico. Yes, yes, yes. Penalties. Real Madrid, if you remember, we where we had to go, we had to go out around the VIP and then walk around the stadium yeah. to get in the mm. in the in the buses. Yeah, and <laughs> you were filming. The Real Madrid fans were walking out like that, and you were saying, "Choice words, granted," but you were saying, "Have a look at you lot. You've just won the Champions League, and it's like you don't care." Do you remember? They yeah. did not care. Words to that effect. It was a weird, and I thought, do you know what? You can swear. Yeah. I don't swear. I'm really. Anyway, so it was just like, oh, <laughs> no, it was great. I was thinking, you're right. No one cared. Liverpool fans winning the Champions League. Mm. I reckon there was a bit of a party in Madrid. A little bit. There wasn't even a party, really, didn't they? We just went home. It was strange. I guess they're so used to success that. Who? The Real Madrid fans. But there it? was still yeah. a sense of in like, so you felt something. I remember walking out when Real Madrid won and it was just like, a heightened sense of emotion for a birthday and then that's your birthday and you carry on. And it wasn't like, oh my God, this is a surreal moment. So yeah. mm. I think they kind of spoiled because if Arsenal ever won the Champions League, there'd be a party they, for they have five five Oh years. no, no, no. They got to the final once and lost. I'm trying to think who the Premier League teams won Champions League. Liverpool a few well, times. Well, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. No, shout out to Adini, that's my guy. Well, well done, man. How many champions? I can't believe you just dug Watford out. Yeah, but we are like Hart Senior Cup winners, I think, in 1987. <laughs> <laughs> and you have that really cool rave as well. What was it? Again, Booj? Area? No, uh, Ocean, o Oceana Watford. Oceana Watford. Oh, an area. DJ there. Oh. The, the, old, the old club? Yeah. The town yes. centre. Used yeah, to be yes. called Paradise Lost. Did you used to go there? Yeah. <laughs> How was it? <laughs> you went Paradise the, Lost. The, the DJ booth went up and down. Yeah? Wow. And had a, had a bridge as well. Wow. Did you get did you get up to a lot of antics off the field while you were a footballer? Well like visiting art galleries and stuff. What did you do? <laughs> what did you do in your spare time? I would always be interested to know who did you hang around with? Who was your circle? Mm. Because you're so unique, I don't imagine that you was doing what 
a lot of the footballers were doing. So who was your really eclectic crowd? Um, Macatee? No. Mac Manaman? Mac, uh, Robbie. Yeah, but they lived, all, all them lived over Liverpool way. I lived down on the Wirral. Yeah. I, so I yeah. spent a lot of time on my own when I say away from the players. Oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's a goalkeeper thing. So I'm, I'm similar. Yeah. Uh, I like, my own, I, I like my gardener at my house. I used to go home. <laughs> See, that, that's another thing. If I was bored, I wish I was bored, I'd like, come on, let's go in the garden and do stuff. Chop trees down and make bomb, love making bonfires. Bonfires. Bonfires are great. And the painting, honestly, you are really talented. That is, it's it changed. Is a, it Things have changed. I've, I've been doing so much now. Yeah, no. It's I'm really into cats good. now. Painting it's cats. Painting cats. <laughs> Don't fuck your no, cats, bro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, don't fuck with cats. You see that Netflix thing where the guy kills the Watched cats. that the other day. What did you think? Yeah. No, what is your perspective? No, that, they, right at the end, it was really interesting about whether they were feeding him to do what he did. I feel like they were but feeding you would argue, him. you would argue, he didn't need all of that attention to do what he did. No. And mm. therefore, he was probably going to do, do it, it anyway. Mm. It's just an excuse for him to say this is the reasons. Because if they had known what he was... Well, they did know. Oh, I don't know. Right, it, was a, it was a really cool, it was a cool program. I even like, yeah, how much it, that kind of point of how much we feed things, mm-hmm. how much it can make it bigger. Like even in politics, etc. All these headlines, the Trumps, whatever, whatever. So how much we feed it is how much it can exist potentially. Yeah, I think that there was one point in that in that doc or that series where there was a video sent of her mm. in the casino. Mm. Yeah, but they never told you who did it. Mm. and you'd think if he got nicked or obviously banged up for <clears throat> for the murder then they would have been able to place him at the scene through phone data and stuff like that mm-hmm. he deleted a lot of it there was I think there was someone else in one of the videos with a snake yeah there was someone else it was a really mad show but mm. the maddest the maddest thing in that whole doc was what Vuge told me initially before I watched it which was what was written inside the wardrobe I think it was don't quote me. I think it was. If you don't like your reflection, stop looking in the mirror. I don't care. Mm. And it was kind of like they're mm. all even like everyone. Vuju was even saying was as well. Play, like, he was playing them, wasn't he? Yeah, everyone in the show just seems a little bit on the edge of something. Like the woman had not she to, had like some relationship problem. And she was emotional, and then she went online, and she was like, "Let me find something to do." And then she found this guy that kills cats, and then she was like, "Yeah, I want to save the cats." And you it's know? like, if you was in a Finding good place, meaning. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And I begin to wonder, if she was in a better place in her life and she saw it, she might have just been like, hmm. Are you going to add something? Well, we wouldn't have that? seen a documentary and arguably he would have done what he was doing anyway. Yeah. yeah. Someone yeah. else would have shown an interest in him. Who knows? Who knows, yeah. Luca Magnolia. The thing is, I didn't, didn't, I've watched Basic Instinct. I've seen it before, but I didn't click. Because mm. anyone who was a real Basic Instinct fan would have known what's going to happen in the end. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I can't remember. Oh, exactly you look like that. Michael Douglas, what his name is. And I was thinking, oh yeah, he does. But I wasn't thinking Basic Instinct. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's the it's the leg cross fan with a cigarette. I said this guy is tapped. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, in the prison, isn't it? Lucas tapped fan. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, I still want to know about this Liverpool side, the Spice Boys, because I was Spice, thought- I wasn't a Spice Boy. Yeah, yeah, but you under, came yeah, under, right after though. Yeah, you can't be retrospectively put in as a Spice Boy. It's worse yeah. than VAR. Mm. But they were lit it's though. Like, it's like doing VAR after the match. Oh, he was offside. Mm-hmm. Um, Fair enough. The Spice Boys were and I, who, younger players because mm. I was a few years older than them. So when they were talking about Spice Boys at the time, mm. it was never me. I was like Spice Dad or something like that. Do you know what I mean? I was, the, I was a sixth member. Mm. Oh, okay, fair And enough. if you look at the Spice Boys now, there's about 15 of us. But it was never like that at the time. No, we, we yeah, I mean, we had, uh, it, it's not annoying. It's annoying when you think we didn't do what we should have done. Or could yes. Have done. But we had, um, we had a new, <clears throat> we had a new era, era, sorry, in, in sort of a couple of different areas. One, the Premier League is new mm. and mm. it was big technology we had satellite tv and the premier league was being shown gradually globally mm. wow. so the attention and stardom that footballers were getting was sort of more um what's the word broader than it would have been before yeah famous george best for example yeah superstar blah 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 um but now all of a sudden 
Premier League players were becoming superstars in Premier League right rather than being elite individuals. And uh, we kind of, I think as Liverpool players, and I'm guilty in one part by doing things like Armani modelling, all of a sudden it's like, oh, you're interesting, we want you. Uh, And then you go and do it because it's kind of, you can. I mean, my Armani thing, just to give you a brief history on it, um, Stan Collymore signed for Liverpool. Okay. He had blonde hair. Mm. I had blonde hair the year before. Mm. And uh, Arena On Plus magazine said, look, we want to do a feature with you and Stan because you look you, you look the same, blah, blah, blah. We'll come up to Liverpool. And <laughs> we did look similar. Anyway, so um, they they came up to Liverpool to do a photo shoot on a Sunday. Mm. And uh, Stan didn't turn up. So the guy, the guy basically said, look, do it on your own. I said, yeah, fine, whatever. Do, 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 do these photos. Guy, the photographer, Norman Watson, son of uh, apparently one of the most famous photographers in, his, in that era. And um, yeah, we were in a car park in Liverpool Town Centre, kissing a football. Whatever. Uh, left it. And um, guy rings me up. He says, uh, really like the photos. We're going to put you on a cover. That's like, wow, crazy. cover of Arena on Plus magazines I've never bought before, but it was kind of I'd never been model before either, so it was it was a bit of fun. <clears throat> and then Norman contacted me and went, um, Armani's press office are all football fans. They've seen my photos of you in Arena on Plus and they want to put you forward for a campaign. Ooh, so I'm like, ooh. what does that mean? And he said, Well, we'd have to do some photographs if they like them, then you'll get the campaign. So okay. What, what do you want to do? Right, we'll go to um, uh, the little Valencia, not Valencia, somewhere in Spain, Seville. Seville. Ooh, so we go to Seville on a day off, so it wasn't interrupting any training sessions. We fly out of Seville um, to a garage. I don't know what it's about car parks and garages, but we're in this garage and he's gone right here, jeans on, da da da. Can you do a sporty pose? I'm thinking, right, what can I do? <laughs> so I went down in like a start position. And he took these photographs and let's say one day, go home, calls me, oh, I might want to use your images for the campaign. So I'm like, wow, that's good. <laughs> that is mad. And then Armani asked me to do the catwalk. So I said to Roy Evans, said, look, they want me to do catwalk tomorrow or day off, whenever it was. Um, it's a day off. They're going to fly me out and I'll be back for training. He said, fine, no problem. Roy so I did that. Evans. And a story came out that I told the club can I have a day off? They said no. And I said, well, what's the fine? I'll pay it, which is nonsense. Oh, it was all agreed. And the thing is, for the for the whole event, there was a photo shoot, catwalk, two days. So anyway, going back to the point, this was kind of new in footballing terms for a footballer to be doing campaign modelling. Um, and so you we, were the first, really? One of the first. I, I believe so, yeah. No, it wasn't the intention. It just happened. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Pre- this pre Beckham and the kind of. That you, is You're cool. almost the yeah. first, not a superstar or. No, it was a super, no, 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 this is the thing. I was just doing a bit of modelling for yeah. someone, Armani, or whatever. Um, but at the same time, you know, FHM, uh, Loaded, all these magazines. I think there was our guys were on a TV show, Chris Evans' TV show. On a, I mean, all at the right time. It wasn't like they were breaking any rules, mm. but we were kind of attracted to the star bit of it mm. and he's seen the Man United boys and I also <coughs> think what are Man United boys doing? Not doing anything. They're winning leagues. Mm. Bex was though. It, not at the beginning. I got, I got pictures of me. There was myself, him, there was, I don't know, five, six of us who were sponsored by Sondico doing a Sondico photo shoot and it's like, I was David Beck and the other one who plays for Man United. It was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Because it was before he became mm. David Beckham. Yeah, but it's Victoria. When he got to Victoria, that was it. When he got to Victoria, so you guys were like the first influencers, basically. Yeah, but it, it was at a time where it wasn't necessarily the right thing to do. Mm. Now it's commonplace. A bit like VAR. We won't even be talking about VAR in fifteen years' time if they get it oh, right. Yeah. It will just be a, a thing that we're used to. Mm. Um, and you know, players endorsing and influencing and all that stuff is commonplace now. In fact, it's almost encouraged. Mm. Whereas we were doing it because we could, mm. and arguably someone should have said, "Don't do it." Did you enjoy that that time, that kind of period of, of your career? 
with the modelling with Armani of Liverpool. So and they, they were different. On. Yeah, and I mean, they, they everything is in a different place. So I, I did do, and the modelling was just in front of the camera, a few photographs. Thank you very much. Mm. It wasn't disruptive, um, although psychologically, mm. I do remember coming back from uh, from Milan and going out in London once and just standing there, thinking I was the yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's lit though well the best thing is someone took a photograph of me while I was doing it so I've seen it back and gone what a dick because that wasn't me do you know what I mean yeah. so the, this sort of altered persona in a sense it was so kind, kind of, of inflated your ego yeah because mm. the, the problem is when you're, you're doing a um, a competitive sport a competitive sport they're all competitive um, when you're in, a, in that competitive environment and I was ultra and still um, ultra competitive. So you want to win everything. You know, walking down the street, if there's a guy walking a little bit faster than everyone else, you've got to overtake him. He doesn't know that's that you've just beat him. <laughs> that's mad yeah, that's too much. I, I know there's people out there like that. They'll go, yeah, I'll get him. And you just beat them to the end of the building. It's like, yeah. I know people like that though, because people do it to me where I walk fast <laughs> and then someone just starts walking beside you really fast. I'm like, well, you can win if you like. <laughs> what? Yeah. See, I wouldn't have got any joy out of beating you. Mm, you just want to know that someone knows that they're going to get beat for that little walk, and you can see them trying to last speed second it. into the door. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so when you when you're ultra competitive like that, you you will find competitions. Mm. This is my argument with a lot of players because, irrespective of the upbringing in football, now mm. it's still a highly competitive industry. You know, when you're eight nine years old, you mm. want to be the best player. Well, you've got to beat someone to be the best player. Yeah. But is it a different type of competition now? Because when you was growing up, because it's interesting that you said that you shouldn't have done it and then you've obviously explained yourself. But with some brands, mm. you can say arguably the biggest brand in football was Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. And with all of the things that footballers are doing these days, and I see obviously Graeme Soon has complained about quite a bit, when it comes to social media and so on and so forth, he should be an example of why it fails. But he's an example where it just works. Like It doesn't distract him from his job. He's 34 years old. And he's still a top, top athlete. I think Zlatan's another example of someone that does things as a Come brand. Man, aside but from Milan, he scores in his second game. Do you know where I'm coming from? So I just think, do you think now that we're growing up in an era where that's all we, like, there's some people growing up and that's all footballers are to them, brands, and it's more of an individual thing, is it a better mindset for some of the players to become better players? Because they're not really thinking about teams as such. They're thinking, how can I be the best in everything and using that competitive edge uh, in that well, way well think about Ronaldo think about and <clears throat> Beckham these weren't brands who became good footballers and therefore you know mm-hmm. symbiotically became superstars mm. these were talented youngsters who had to work Beckham I mean I think Ronaldo was the best one people were people complaining about him when he first signed for Manchester United as a youngster that he was trying too much mm. it wasn't like they signed him and he played every game yeah he had to earn his stripes in a sense he did and he uh, Rio keep Rio said this once he said never work with a player who's worked who works as hard as Ronaldo wow. so I never knew that so me watching him as a, an observer you'd go yeah why is he diving why is he doing this why is he doing that and then I was thinking do you know what he is the best he scores all the goals Yeah. he works hard and when Rio says he works harder than anyone else he knows and I know how hard Rio works yeah. then he deserves everything he gets yeah. and if you are the best in the world mm. There is an argument that you can do what you want. And I don't mean in a bad way. If you want to be lazy in in someone's eyes, you actually know that you've done everything to get there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I, the problem is because he's the best in the world. I mean, I, I saw his social media a few years ago now. You think he's the best in the world? Do I think? Yeah. Um, is he level now with Messi? Could he Messi win the Ballon d'Or? Yeah, he always wins it, doesn't he? Uh, no, no, Ronaldo's been winning it for like, was it four years in a row, something like that? Mm. Three or four years in. But no, 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 it wasn't because no. yeah, um, Ronaldo was not turn up. Just won it. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's two guys, Messi and Ronaldo, yeah. for yeah. what, 10, 15 years now, whatever it is, have been the top of the football industry. One Adidas, one Nike. That's strange. Mm. Hmm. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Planned. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> the point being is, when you are up there, you're going to, and your, your social media following, everything you do is going to be arguably right because you're the best in the world, but it's what you do. And people aren't looking the training side of thing the work ethic that interview he did with some guy recently um and he said yeah when he gets when he gets home spends 45 minutes with his boy or his kids and then goes in the gym 
Mm. And it was like, that's my kid time, <laughs> then's my gin time. Rather than, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll spend a bit more time with the kids and do the family thing. Well, his, his work is so professional on and off the field that he becomes the best. Oh, it's truth. What can you do? Do you think they're distracted, though, by, by trying to become stars or all these off-field? The, the younger even? players. Yeah. Is it yeah, well, this is the thing. Idea? If you want to mirror that, then you have to do the stuff that you don't see, which is nigh and impossible. Because Ronaldo's not showing everyone in the gym, when he's in the gym every day. I say, I watched his social media one weekend. It was, I think it was on Friday in the early days. I think he had some like 10 million. And then by the Monday, it was 13 million. And I was thinking, he hasn't even posted anything. <laughs> it's kind of like, <laughs> well, I, was, I was on 80,000. I was thinking, shh. Mm. Anyway, um, but it, that was the thing. And if you look at the social media posts, hardly, I, I'd not I actually follow him, but you know, it's not about his day to day routines. Because he doesn't mm. have to do that. But it's what he does day to day is the secret bit, which the kid who's 12 years old now, you know, he works hard. What does he do? I don't know. Does he want to be a social... Fo- uh, yeah. yeah. Tough. It and also, tough. there's more kids involved now. More kids, more players involved. And I, mm. I keep telling people, in England, rough maths, uh, 90 teams, 60, really rough maths, 60 pros per team, 5,400, yeah? That is the available opportunities for footballers in England. Jesus Christ, we're looking. That's the reason why they go abroad. Look at the Sanchos. Um, Smith Rowe went abroad yeah. at one point. Reese Nelson's gone abroad at one point. I think that is. I'm so glad footballers are going down that angle. And mm. I'm kind of glad as well that footballers are taking more pride in themselves. Because long gone are the era of managers dictating what they feel is the perception of the right thing in football. I, th- I think that's wrong. It's an idea you have. I've heard ridiculous stories like. David Moyes showing Rio Ferdinand videos of Phil Jagielka. Like, I'm so glad that's gone and I'm so glad footballers are now looking at themselves kind of like Americans when they were basketballers. Michael Jordan is an, an, an absolute legend. Mm-hmm. We love Chicago Bulls at the time, but you love Michael Jordan more. And I'm glad that's being emulated in football because I think it's important for players to take pride in themselves and understand their, their own journey. If you didn't, does Sancho it, go it to depends. Dortmund? Yeah, it depends where you are though. I mean, I, I've Fair been enough. in... Uh, I've been playing for England and the manager's told me not to have my hair cut in a certain way. Oh my God. Oh, oh my. McLaren. No, so I shaved it off. Not McLaren. I'm not, no, no, I'm not telling you who, but it was kind of like, oh, you don't have your hair short, so I shaved my hair off. So you shaved it off, oh, does damn, it? I sort of only shaved it off once. Anyway. <laughs> no, it's giving so it away. away. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a comment, let us know who it was. <laughs> so okay, cut there. No, but it, it, it's an interesting dynamic as well when it comes to international stuff. Mm. Um, because ultimately, the manager's going to pick you for, well, you'd like to think one reason, that's you're good enough. Mm. But when you've got this, uh, one of my old coaches used to say to me, people take the path of least resistance. So you could be a good player, with mm-hmm. a bit of an attitude, you could be a good player with no, at, uh, no attitude. Who are you going to pick? Probably the one who's going to make your day easier. Depending on who you are. And depending, As, on what, depending on the manager. Yeah, some yeah, managers yeah. might deliberately go for the one who's difficult because they love the challenge. Mm-hmm. So as a player, you can be whoever you want to be, but you've got to make sure you're being the best person you can be for the person you're working for. Mm-hmm. Or get a good agent and get a move. That as well. I mm. think that's, I wish Ravel Morrison had done that earlier. What a, such, such a talent. Such a talent. Pogba's in a bit of a strange situation as well right now. I know he's been had a few injuries, but he's big. He's big on the socials, and there's been all these criticism in the media by commentators, etc. I think it's been a bit been a bit unfair. Yeah, I think but it's uh, a weird place to be. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, I can't comment on on him specifically because I don't follow him on social media mm-hmm. I don't read stories but and again generally the way the game's changed and talking about the sort of feedback aspect you <clears throat> I remember being in in changing rooms and guys reading newspapers or even on social media to a point where it's like they're saying this and you've been in the situation they're talking about and it's like where have they got this story from because none of it is true Jesus and Christ. unfortunately depending on who says what and the audience they've got, and then all of a sudden it spirals into this, you know, no smoke without fire. Yeah, it's got to be true because, you know, no one's going to say if it's not true. You're thinking, bullshit. Mm. Bullshit. How yeah. was that like in the Liverpool era where, to be honest with you lot, you lot were expected to win something. You had a very talented We did, we won the League Cup. Yeah, League Cup, innit? Um, something, 
a little bit greater. No disrespect to the. Is that a dumpling? Part. Yeah. Hacking saltfish. And I got uh, you jerk chicken and rice. Well, eat that, in just a second. a plain dumpling. Yeah, it's a plain dumpling. Oh, yeah. Aki saltfish dumplings are the best. Mm. Well, they're a bit messy because when you bite into it, it all spills out. So. Wait, Aki saltfish in that, the dumpling? Word up. You don't go to KD's in Wilsdon, word man. down, bro. KD's, KD's in, in Wilsdon does the best. I've heard Aki KD's saltfish. is banging. Dumpling with Aki saltfish in it. Yeah. I like the sound of that. My man's, my man's got the, uh, he's got the Jamaican national team photo from What English eight, person made 94? it? Hey, go on. Jamaican national team photo from 94? Mm. Was 94 World Cup? 98. 98, forgive me. It's still there. Mm. It was colour. It's starting to go a little bit. Feeling <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Now we're relying on Leon um, Bailey now. You were saying, I was going to say, you were saying no smoke, no fire, but you were a heavy smoker in your footballing days. Uh, no, no, my early football days. Early footballing days. Yeah. But that was just 20 a day. Man. How common no, was no, it? No, Ray Parler no, spoke no. about loads of, of French players at Arsenal in 97, 98, all smoking and all them boys. Yeah, Red Star, Belgrade. Yeah, maybe it was common in, in the Arsenal team because loads of French players. Mm. Apologies. Yeah, there, there, there was smoke. I mean, I mean, yeah, there, more players, I'd argue, uh, I'd imagine smoke then. And I smoked when I was 15. I bust my finger. Mm. Anti-smoking. I was, when I was at school, I was anti-smoking hated it hated it hated it and then I bust my finger couldn't play I had a pin sticking out my finger and I used to used to joke with my mates I'd be like just fag stick it on the end of it I'd go look smoking <laughs> and then one day <clears throat> it's amazing what you do when you're 15 and then one day uh, I did it with a lit cigarette I had a puff 15 years smoke for <laughs> oh, that is incredible 15 years man commitment but I didn't Dedicate, yeah dedicated to smoking I don't think that's something but that's I a proud very of, but. unique way to start smoking though a pin in your finger a broken finger and you stick a cigarette on the end yeah. of it and you just 15 years only yeah. David James I'm sorry <laughs> only David James I gave up in a week what do you mean 2000 gave up I said I tried on New Year's Day but my one of my sort of things was having a fag before a game yeah <laughs> so New Year's Day resolution I'm giving up smoking and then it was like I've <laughs> got a game I'll have to have a fag <laughs> So I left it for about a week and then said, give it up now. And then just one week stopped. Cool. That is crazy. Did it affect you? What was your Marlboro Lights, Reds? What was your kind of Benson Hedges? <laughs> what did you go for? B&H. B&H. B &H. Oh, uh, there was no yeah. mint ones as well. Do you reckon you would have liked it if you had the mint ones? Nah. With a clicky click click. B&H Gold. B&H Gold. MC number one. Nice. I went through little phases. For WKD as well. That was awkward as well. <laughs> if, if I ran out of cigarettes... I would not have anyone else's cigarette that wasn't my no way my chosen. I mean, sometimes I do social smoke. I'll be honest, and I mean, I'm more of I, I don't like to buy them. I prefer nicking them. It feels like you're less of a smoker, nicking them off someone else. Yeah, like, oh, oh, okay, I thought you meant not nicking them, <laughs> not actually shot. nicking them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you're doing that when they're behind the counter. Anyhow, yeah. <laughs> like, well, how close are you? Excuse like, me, have you got the, can they have their match tax down there? Yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah. you said you, you wouldn't do that at all, ever? No, no. So I, 15 years I smoked. I, I, I had to try and build, because my, my argument was that I'm fit. Mm. I can get away with it. It was a ridiculous argument. Mm. But yeah. then one day I was, I was like, do you know what? When I'm 65 years old, do I still want to be smoking? Do I enjoy it that much? And I just couldn't see myself at 65 just sat there having a fag looking cool with a cup of coffee so I decided 2000 I'm going to give up um, and then I for 12 years did not have one cigarette then what 12 happened? years what mm. then I was out in uh, Middle East doing some TV work alright Kevin the weirdest the weirdest thing weirdest thing I'm in this in this hotel bar and uh, I had a couple of beers and this guy was sat there smoking Marlboro Marlboro is the one fag I would not touch Gold's uh, never red no no no, no. Oh. no pff, never when we grew up it was associated with some radical right wing lot but anyway oh. um, that was probably schoolyard talk and, and there's no foundation in it. but anyway so it was one of those cigarettes never used to touch and this guy is sat there smoking Marlboro and I've gone oh mate yeah, can, I have, can I have a fag and I had a cigarette and I was back on it for three years. Oh. <laughs> Literally got back on and went, yeah, bends and edges, please. But it's a weird one as a habit. It's, it, oh, we we all have, our brains are so interesting. Mm. The fact that you can do something for so long, just stop it with a thought about the future. 
and you come back in and someone has some that has one you take it and you're back in for three years it's such a strange and you know, know it's not good for you but yet it does new it's like, it's like PUBG what's what? PUBG PUBG what's that you know PUBG the audience knows PUBG it is the original PUBG like PUBG I know some Asian guy players um, PUBG is like spiritual PUBG, PUBG, PUBG. leader play it play it un- criminal play it <laughs> underground so you don't even know, but you expected us battle to battle. Hang on, player unknown battlegrounds. That's what it is. It's the original, the game, original uh, Fortnite. Okay. So, uh, oh. while I was in India, all the lads were playing it, and I'm, I'm manager, and I'm like, yeah, what are these lads doing? And it kept flashing up on adverts on my phone. That's when I didn't switch all the things off. Um, and I thought, oh, I'll have a look at it. <sighs> Bang. <laughs> Hooked. It's a good game. <laughs> It's a good game, so I can. And the thing is, you know, as I said, I can't spend a lot of time in Hong Kong, so uh, Hong Kong's not as easy to to uh, switch off. No, it's uh, what's the word? Relax. I want to say relax, uh, like gyms and stuff. Hong Kong's not as easy as say London. So London, you go or England, you can go out for a walk in a park. Well, Hong Kong doesn't have the parks. Blah blah blah. You know, so I'm playing these games. Serious? Yeah. So I, I would invest my time in making sure I got all the. GPs got to ace level, which is pretty good. So for the gamers, I there's a lot of games. They, they watching I didn't get to conquer. I didn't get to conquer. I got to ace. Is that Green Callum? I don't know, but these guys. The guys yeah. watching one off. Three seasons in a row, I got to ace, and, and I didn't cheat. So it's kind of I. My thing was doing missions, da 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 da, and I was doing all that. Then I was going to do the, <clears throat> as I say, do the dance show, and I knew that was going to be serious amount of work. Mm. So from one of the one of <laughs> and you people know this one of the um, tasks in PUBG was playing for as long as you could in a day so you'd get bonuses for playing for longer <laughs> what, what the hell of, how long did you play for what kind of juju is this <laughs> 8 hours in a day was alright so why are you laughing 10? anyway you play FIFA you're not telling me you haven't played FIFA for 8 hours in a day <laughs> no that's, that's a whole shift that, that's... 8 hours Playing FIFA as much as I love it, bro. There's so, now, I've there's... done Pro Evolution Soccer definitely back in Eight the day. Yeah, Look, yeah. But how old Master did you do this, please? Huh? How old did you do this, please? Fifteen. I was just like lower in it, but it wasn't fifteen. It was last year. <laughs> <laughs> but I read. You know what I read? I was. was doing... Hey, listen, listen, poet. You don't become ace unless you cheat or you put the hours in. And you put in the work. <laughs> I put the hours in. Ferg. What, so anyway, what? so here's another one for you. So when I went, I knew I had to do a dance show, just gave up PUBG, not played it since. Serious? From eight hours a day to nothing. So would you say you have like an addictive potential personality or mind frame or whatever? It's not addictive. It's, mm. um, I'm, I'm, yeah, how do I describe it? Have they given you a I word? haven't got OCD. I just like doing certain things a lot. Okay. I think me and you spoke about like philosophy of life. We spoke about like mm. mental health. We spoke about all those <laughs> I love you, elements of of the of the mind. How, how fascinating it can be. And you tell me that they there was you went to therapy right one time. Mm-hmm. Are, you, are, you, are you allowed to speak about this? Do you want to speak about this? Are you comfortable? Well, how have I not had a coffee offered to me since I've been here for like? Do you what? want a coffee? Yeah, no, black coffee, please. Joe, you know I'm okay. Can you make it? <laughs> when he, when I, he I asked you if you wanted one, I don't. I'll make it. <laughs> no, 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 I can make coffee. No, you know what it is? Should we have a break? A food break? Have a break. Let's have a break. Let's have a break. Let's have a break. And then come back in. Let's have a break. No, there's no rules. Let's have a break. You haven't started yet, have you? Yeah, Yeah, we'll start now. That's truth. I keep forgetting. Which is not really that one of them. Yeah, that's what they all say. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go, Grizzly. What were we talking about? We were talking about off camera. We were eating a bit about mental health in general and football. Hmm. Well, I didn't happen to be in the room, so this awkward silence means mm. we can start with something else. Um, you were talking to me about Ronaldo. Oh, Ron. Which one? What a guy. CR7 or on a... CR7. What a hero. Oh, he buried you. <laughs> oh, my one Lord. of the greatest free kicks. I forgot. Ever. Does anyone get, like, in the change room, you must just say, lads, uh, there's nothing I could do. It was the wind. <laughs> You watch that man, it's going over and then it just catches a bit of wind. I think they've improved that area in the Old Trafford and now just sort of dips in the right and sort of corner. Wow. Was that for Pompey? <laughs> oh, mate. 
So it was a foul. It wasn't even a foul. It wasn't I, a foul. I, do, I think I blame Sol for giving away the foul. And he hit it and I thought, I'm going... I'm not, oh. It was kind of one of those moments, you know, like... It, oh. Hmm. Hmm. At and least he, now you're going to be in like every single high, highlight reel for like premiership years yeah. or anything like that. Although it won't be one of your best memories, at least you're there. Yeah, I'm kind of more famous for letting in Ronaldo's goal than making any saves. That's nice. It's kind of made 26 years of professional football worthwhile. Like. That is, that is, the game is the game. <laughs> yeah, the game is the game. What about that? Yeah, because funny enough, it's, there's two things since I've been uh, since I stopped playing. <clears throat> One is <gasps> Ronaldo's goal. Mm-hmm. So these kids will go, "Oh, Ronaldo's goal!" I'm like, "Yeah." And the other one was <laughs> the Wembley Cup. No way! In Hong Kong, doing a, a soccer soccer training session, and the kids are like, yeah. "What was it like playing in the Wembley Cup?" Well, we lost, didn't we? Hmm. I mean, I've won two. We lost. Thanks, Benny. Huh? I lost one. Yeah, that was, was that with you? Well, it wasn't that wasn't down to me. Is that, he was there, right? Is that weird for you though? That you're getting recognised for the Wembley Cup, a YouTube football initially, yeah, because it was kind of you're playing football. I used to play football and was recognised as a footballer, and as in for what I did, and you're picking up the Wembley Cup. And I thought, okay, fair enough. These kids were like nine, ten years old. Mm. So wow. arguably they weren't even alive when I was playing Premier League football. So it was kind of all right. And now it's dancing. So I'll be walking through a through a supermarket and people go, "Hi, hi, I thought you were really good." Oh yeah, thanks. I'm thinking I needed that one for a couple of months. So is it? And but yeah, that's the way it is. But Ronaldo, yeah, what a guy. I mean, the reason I like him. Is not he was talented? For, is a talented football still talented? But my um, I was doing some rehab. And my son was with me in Portugal while I was doing this rehab at a golf place, and the guy said that the picture we were using was off off bounds, out of bounds for uh, for the following day because a special guest was going to be there, which turned out to be Ronaldo. My son said, uh, "Dad, could play football, with Ronaldo." <laughs> like, no, son, no, no. All oh, right, okay, we'll walk, we'll walk down there just because we're here. Walk down and Ronaldo went high. So I uh, said to his mate, he said, is it right if my son, who was 15 at the time, is it right if he goes on the on the pitch as a kick around? And he had a word with Ronaldo and Ronaldo said as long as he doesn't tackle him, which was obvious. Mm. So my boy went out, had a kick around with Ronaldo and I was like, nice. Lucky, because the wind caught the ball <laughs> the top corner. Did he say anything to you? Is that where you reckon he recognised you from? He's probably forgotten about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ronaldo recognised me. Oh, yeah, that goal. Oh, thinking. yeah. Hi. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but I, there's, there's a side which, and as I say, when, you, when you're watching telly, you're watching a football match, you're watching even the interviews at times, there's this persona about someone and you can obviously like them or dislike them, mm. but you don't know the person. And this was a moment. It wasn't. We weren't walking around with cameras for Instagram or, in, or Twitter or anything like that. It was just he was having a kick around. My boy wanted to go on there, and it was like he allowed it to happen. I thought that's nice because mm, yeah. he could have easily said no. Too young to come out with any excuses. Mate could have said no. It's not happening, and it happened. So it's something my uh, my boy will remember for a few years. Oh, that's pretty cool, though. Isn't it? Every time he mentions Ronaldo, I think of the goal and I leave him. At least you have a bit of a shopping centre. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, was was there a particular save in your career or a highlight which you, sticks to memory? Yeah, there, there's a few. It's, <clears throat> they're weird. Some of them are weird. Some of them, because again, going back to the, the sort of technological age, early days of the Premier League, it's difficult to find stuff. Um... You know, now if I went from 2017 I get Easy, anything yeah. 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 I mean I'm, one of my um, my accounts I use I can I can access full matches from the last 15 years any match nice. pretty much in the world I can get but if I start going back I think the early stuff they got from me would be I think it's Tottenham Portsmouth in 2008 or something it's no this way odd game yeah it, it, somewhere it's there but it's like it's not easy to access but the um, no. so we played 
That's ridiculous. Liverpool Everton. The first derby. One two one, and it was it was the la- literally the last kick of the game. I don't know who it was. Volley edge of the box. I've started going, it's taking the deflection, and literally top corner, put it out for a corner, and the referee blew the whistle. Oi, oi, oi. So it was one of those things, the, the event wasn't replayed. There might have been one little clip somewhere, but it wasn't like, oh, they got the corner, and they the save, yeah. and it's like, uh, what are they going to do from the corner? It was like, Liverpool 1 2 1. Uh, that's kind of like an album track that no one remembers but it has such sentimental value to the people that actually love the artist mm. so I reckon there's people in Liverpool that really remember that save and that kind of makes it more special than it just yeah. being like on the net for everyone to look at and just not really pay, pay attention to well I met a guy whoever this guy was randomly somewhere years later and it was like oh it was a great save against seven and I was thinking do you remember it he was like yeah I was there and it was like Nice man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of our little, yeah, nice. Uh. What was your most, sorry to cut you, what was your most like, um, the, your favourite team to be in? Because you did play in a couple of teams mm. with big characters. Um, there'd have been a couple of England teams you would have played with some characters and then the Pompey team, Liverpool boys. Well, my, my thing about football is I, I love the game yeah. and everything that the game offers. Now, it doesn't mean that it has to be necessarily positive, even the downside. It's kind of, it's a, it's a life experience. You know what I mean? So, Pompey, for example, you know, went there, they'd avoided relegation. <sighs> Man City, it's true. We were on a horrendous run. We go to Pompey, Fratton Park, one all. And we, for me, it was like, with a couple of minutes to go, it's like, we're going to get a draw away from home. I think we'd lost 10 away or something. It was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Horrible, horrible um, run of form. And then Pedro Mendes decided to volley one in the top corner. And we lost 2-1. And I was driving back to Devon from Portsmouth. Didn't have sat nav. At the time, I was just, I was pissed. Oh man, I was not. I heard football radio on, and these Pompey fans were going, <laughs> they're ringing up, going, "Yeah, we're going to survive." And I was going, "I hope we go down. I hope we go down." Oh. <laughs> trying to get out of Portsmouth to get down to Devon, which if you haven't got sat nav, is a nightmare. Portsmouth, Portsmouth being an island, anyway. Yeah. Um, so. I kind of really went off Portsmouth and then I signed for them the next year. Uh, so it was one of these mad things. Had they not stayed up, obviously I wouldn't have signed for them. So um, then I've joined Portsmouth and I joined on the basis that this was going to be a relegation battle because Portsmouth had always had relegation battles. Mm. And until January, I think we were in the top six. Who was in that team? Uh, Sol Campbell. I'd, I'd rank Sol because mm. Sol had signed first and I rang him up and I went, you know, why have you signed? <clears throat> Half anticipating he's gone, money's really good. Duh, duh, duh. And something not to do with trying to do good things in football. And he said, No, I've had a chat with him, it's really good. Duh, duh, duh. And everything was positive. And I was thinking, Well, Sol, ex England teammate, if he can sign for them for the right reasons, then that means that one guy in there, because I didn't know anyone else in the team, one guy's good, he'll be playing in front of me. So I thought, Yeah, I'll do, I'll do it. So we signed. And also, <coughs> <coughs> I, I like driving. So, you know, I. I looked on the map, 100, 120 miles, I think, from where I was living in Devon. I thought, okay, that's an hour and a half. Mm. Easy. An hour and a half in the morning, what's that? It took me three hours to get there when, oh, I, when I went to sign. It took me four hours to get home. And I was like, but it was a Friday, so I excused it was a Friday. So I kind of signed on a map <laughs> and sold Campbell. So did you drive there every... I'd three, three, sometimes four days a week. Nah, so two, like two and a half a hours each way. Do you like driving a lot then? Surely? Yeah, it, it was nice. It was uh, it was my time, so I was leaving mm. at half six. It was like there was Forest Gump moments when you're driving over the the South Downs thing. It is um, sunsets coming up. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh man, best driving ever. Did a two and a half hours. Stop at McDonald's, get a baguette or a bagel. Sorry, black coffee in a fruit bag. Healthy option. Um, that was my breakfast and then go training and then yeah do that so the Portsmouth thing was there was going to be this battle and we started five clean sheets in a row we got up into top six and it was it was amazing that was 2006-7 we played the Asia Trophy in Hong Kong Um, beat Liverpool in the final (coughs) two penalty saves (coughs) no goals conceded and um, friendly game 
Yeah, he's a trophy. And there's a trophy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being serious. I go. There were a lot of Liverpool fans there, not many Portsmouth fans. But it was that 2007, <laughs> 2008 start. We went on to win the cup that year, didn't we? So it was kind of, we went from, well, the club went from sort of struggling survivors to mm. Europe. What was that, Harry Redknapp, right? Harry Redknapp. What was Harry like as a coach? Love Harry. Love Harry. He, um, <sighs> my favourite story about Harry. So we played Everton. I watched it on YouTube. Oh no, yeah, someone put, someone sent me a link on YouTube. The David James 30 penalty saves. Anyway, yeah, anyway. nice, nice. Um, it's about one and one and a bit a year. It's not bad. Um, mm. We uh, that's a good. So it's we, not bad. So you are keeping me. Yeah, a couple of them with the Asia Trophy, so I don't think they count. Uh. Anyway, one point one a year. But anyway, so we the um, we playing Everton, and my <laughs> my cousin had rang, sent me a message, basically saying that he would brought his marriage forward a year early because my aunt was dying. Mm -hmm. Neil. so I went into Harry and I went he's got a wedding on Friday mm. in Bedfordshire mm. given that we're on the south coast we were playing Everton on Saturday and I said uh, I can drive up to Bedford go for the wedding stay there for a couple of hours and drive to Everton, drive to Liverpool blah 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 and he went do what you want son as long as you don't let any fucking goals in and I went thanks cool drove up took three hours driving to Liverpool took four hours so it was seven hours driving got to the hotel late and just went I was out cold <clears throat> play Everton the next day win 3 nil, saved the penalty and I was like yeah had the manager put up any resistance then you go into the game thinking have I done the right thing here because I know he's not happy blah 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 it was like do what you want to do and his man management skills Harry were amazing mm -hmm. Amazing. I really love Harry. I really, I hated the fact that I liked him as a Spurs manager. He was such a likable character. Mm. His yeah. honesty, even when he got called a wheeler and dealer, the way <laughs> <laughs> the way he responded to that is absolutely that's YouTube gold. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. Yeah, but icon. you kind, I kind of, I mean, I don't want to offend him because I love him. But we did kind of look at him like that, especially when I look at that Portsmouth side. The amount of players he managed to bring in. Mm. to that side that went on to win the cup mm. I was kind of fearful that they were going to start doing some really 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 big things you had your Kubo at the club right I remember Carnu being at the club yourself Lualua. Sam Campbell was Loalawa there at the time no, before oh, was that man. before um, Montari Sully Montari Stavanovic what a man what a player De Dejan Dejan yeah, yeah. 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 What, what, what Dejan <laughs> I mean, that's to me is a mad group of characters. Like, what's, what were they? What was the dynamic of that? Like in the changing mm. room, and how were you all together? It, it changed. Oh, it, it changed dramatically because the the sort of the initial um, nucleus, if you like, was English. Yeah, heavy English, loads of banter. Brexit. <laughs> what it, what the thing was, it was loads of English banter, and I think that's why it was easy McNeil. for me to fit in. Mm. Gary O'Neill. Was it Gary O'Neill? Oh no, Gary Gary Roman. Um, yeah, so loads of banter, but it was it was good banter, mm. um, and we just kind of laughed our way through a year and a half, two seasons, whatever. It was a good laugh, and then all of a sudden there was a there was a shift. It became very French. Um, the likes of uh, Lastiara, for example. Oh, I came from Austin. good guys, but nowhere near the English kind of banter level. Mm. and then all of a sudden the whole dynamic starts changing and yeah it kind of it went a bit funny then Harry left and then it was just we just plummeted and going back to the point about good clubs it was the the Portsmouth experience four years two FA Cup finals mm -hmm. um, Europe Milan in the Europa Cup coming to Fratton Park nice no I don't remember what there was another guy Ron Dino, that who Dino decided Dino to hit a free kick in the top fucking left corner who did? what was his name Ronald Dean did Dino in it yeah Dino <laughs> Dino who was that over the free kick was it, was it <laughs> Dino Beckham and someone else huh it was, some, it was something ridiculous it was a free kick and the players over the free kick mm. I remember oh, watching the, it like, for, for who? for, for Milan, Milan. That, that Beckham wasn't in this game who's in this Ron game? Ron came on a sub we were winning 2-0 with 10 minutes to go yeah I remember and they bring this, Ron on 
and he this free kick and I'm like go on then and then something was wrong with the wall Crouch he was on the wrong side or something so I'm trying to like run it across and then hit it and then <laughs> how, was oh, it? Mate. how does yeah. it feel when you know you haven't gotten <laughs> yeah. it is that when, in a split second when you're like that and you think my arms are not long enough yeah and then you're just hoping that in the 0.01 seconds that it goes past you that it doesn't go in you've got and then it hits the person. post and goes in and then you're like ugh what was the score in that game? Because you were winning two. It was two one then. Oh, okay. And then Inzaghi decided to score an equaliser. Two two. Bro, let's just be honest though. These are still great moments. Like yeah, what? And the, yeah, but this, the, this is my and love. Ronaldo. This is my love of football, because even now, Portsmouth fans talk about the day that AC Milan played at Fratton Park in a game we drew two all. Mm. As a professional, you're like we're two up ten minutes ago. We should have won the game, mm. irrespective of who it was. We should have won the game. Mm. And the fans are like, no, AC Milan, Ronaldinho came down. And, you know, you're talking about limbs. It's kind of that bit of football. So we win the FA Cup in 2008. My, one of my most cherished moments in football is not winning the cup. It was a day after. So we win the cup. And it was like, yeah, we, we should have won it. We're playing a championship side. <laughs> and we won 1-0, which is nice. But we should have won it. We were playing a championship side. Okay, cool. Lads are dancing around in front of the fans. I'm sort of stood back on a pitch. Go and do a drugs test, which was delayed because there was Cardiff players in there. Got back in the change Taking room. The drugs. players, <laughs> they were a mandatory drug test for certain players. It was pre pre uh, <laughs> it was a DJ, it was pre two thousand eight. Yeah, before I got back in England squad. Mm. Um, and got back in the change room. There's champagne dripping from the ceiling, and one player in the shower. Everyone had fucked off, <laughs> so I didn't even get to enjoy the play of it. Uh, and I said to the guy can I go in there he said no no he's got the paperwork and when until he comes out then you can go to change room so I miss all that stuff so it's kind of like we won the cup yeah well done love it love it of course but um, the following day we went to South Sea Common in Portsmouth and we were on a so we first we go to the stadium you know the open top bus thing yeah that's so we go to the stadium <clears throat> we're on the open top bus it's like okay drive out a couple of walkers by or passes by yeah, well done. Okay, driving, driving further into town. There's a couple of people hanging out a window, going, "Hey, well done." I'm thinking, I've seen other teams do this. <laughs> there's, there's people everywhere, and we're going to the town hall. I knew where the town hall was, and it was just around the corner. So it was like, maybe Portsmouth fans aren't that bothered. And then we missed the town hall and went to South Sea Common. If you ah. Oh, it was like a, I described it as this scene from like a zombie movie where they're all just you seen uh, yeah, yeah, wo- yeah. World War Z <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where yeah. There's yeah. thousands and thousands and thousands of bodies just moving in one direction and we get round to the stage uh, they reckon 200,000 people there Jesus wow. Christ 200,000 po- the population of Portsmouth is 200,000 so everyone so essentially everybody the in the thing. area came to celebrate us winning the cup and it was that moment that you go, this is what winning the cup means to Portsmouth. Oh, that is sick. Oh, man, it was, it was crazy. Now yeah. imagine that and now take your mind back to 2015 when Real Madrid won the Champions League. Exactly. <laughs> it's just like, it's so surreal to me. Yeah. Are you going to go and celebrate in Madrid Town Centre? No, I went last two years. <laughs> oh, I think there's a sale on at uh, Court Inglés. And then you see the Pompey fans and you're just like, yeah. I just find that stuff so, 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 so sick in football. Those little stories that like Portsmouth played AC Milan, Portsmouth won the FA Cup, mm. went back and it was 200. Because when you take, take a look at where Portsmouth are now, it's unfortunate Such when you have team. their Come. memories. And that fan that has all the badges on yeah. it. Like, they, put, they were fans were loud. Pompey. Listen, Pompey. I remember when Sky Sports would show coverage on a game like that. Yeah. You heard there was limbs. When your Kubu scores... Oh, bro, I used to love football. You could slide off the pitch and oh. like, hit someone in the front row. Do you, we, we, park, you could like hit someone because it's, yeah, it's it low, like, like proper when, low. When we, were, when we were playing Premier League, the, there was certain aspects of uh, Fratton Park, which is still there now. I think the stand's over 100 years old. Oh, wow. The, the, the goal mouth went up. No way. Which essentially is where the, the grounds would put loads of sand on it, builds up, builds up, builds up. So we're in a Premier League and we have got like a League One ground pitch. Mm-hmm. Go over Arsenal, Tottenham, perfectly flat, or you know, mm. slight camber on it for all that. 
And this was, this had a mound in the middle of it. It was like, <laughs> this is 90s stuff, do you know what I mean? That's so a certain special. characteristics were, yeah. were beautiful. Um, and there was a there was a lad I met. And again, this is the, kind of the, the reality check as well. So I went to the stadium on a Friday for something or other. And this guy comes up. He's got a, an old Portsmouth Goldie top on. Not quite retro, but old. Oh, Dave, da, 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 da. he's talking to me. And I said, yeah, yeah. I said, you coming to the game tomorrow? And he went, no, I can't afford it. Too expensive. But all the best, and it goes off. And I was thinking, well, this guy doesn't even go to the games, but he's still wearing his Portsmouth shirt. It was a bit of pride. And that kind of, I was like, yeah, that, that's what football does. And it, when the, the club reflects the community, then it's a good club. And everything that Portsmouth Football Club was doing mm. outside of the sort of whatever happened with the financial stuff, the people of that club, you know, the... the I'm sure you've been to football clubs who have changed stadium or built improved mm. stadium. How the, the local fabric gets taken away and it becomes more corporate. Mm. Mm. But Portsmouth. I was talking about that last time on the podcast. Yeah, it's upsetting because I think those are the beautiful things in football that maybe the world doesn't know, but when you go to that place, mm. it gives it a sense of identity and then you get to fall in love with their story. Do you know mm. what I mean? And when their story is given to you by some type of corporate machine only to make money it loses that authentic, like, that, that authentic part of it that makes me go this is why I love football mm-hmm. so when I see things like VAR and all of these other things it just takes away that that beauty and imperfection in football like yeah guess what you go to the Portsmouth ground in the Premier League it looks like a League One ground that's what's so sick about it <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. because it's an experience you're not going to have like, that's why I don't want Crystal Palace to move I saw the bloody BT done coverage the other day. It looked like a school corridor. Everyone was walking yeah, up one by one. Yeah. That is kind of cool. Real I think, English. Do you know what I'm saying? Why would football. you change those things? Because it then makes it such a surreal experience if you go to Serbia and you play, you know, Red Star away in the cup. It, you're just so... Been there, done that. Of course, you're Lost a G. Lost 2-0. Uh, yeah, with the Icelandic team, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, one goal, if a VAR, we would have been 1-0 up. Oh. Uh, if we'd have scored three, we'd have won 3-2. doesn't matter. Um, Still a great story. Red Star, yeah. And, and that, funny enough, that was one thing about going to, I don't know what it's called, Red Star Stadium. Uh, Maracana. It was Maracana, now it's, uh, oh, I forgot his name. <laughs> Raikomitic Stadium. Okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But the Maracana. Just going there, and it had the heritage, but there comes a point so where heritage. it. Heritage. heritage. You build a new stadium, that heritage lost. I think the one mm. place which is, is probably the best example. But it's getting back there, maybe because they have the cup finals. There's Wembley. You know, I played in the the last, was it the last FA Cup final? Yeah, 2000. Mm. At Wembley, the old Wembley. Mm. I went to the old Wembley. Twin Towers and oh, it was two towers. I can't remember if it's Twin Towers or two towers. Probably twin. Two towers? Probably two, two, probably not two, twin. Two, twin yeah. or something else. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, you know, I can't miss that long ago now. Yeah. And now they've got the arch. And the thing about the arch is you can see that from just about anywhere in London. It's odd. Mm. you'd be driving around it's like it's Wembley <laughs> through, through some building that's Wembley I know it's miles away it's kind of yeah, Brixton can... somewhere <laughs> like, that, that's Tom Wembley there um, but it, they, they've kind of been able to and again because cup finals and big events they can create the new legacy if you like mm. um, Highbury so we used to play at Highbury <laughs> what a summer did you to... miss it by it? Highbury was beautiful. Highbury had what I'm speaking about, the little things that only some of the Arsenal fans will remember. So in behind, the, where the screen was in the corner, you would see a series of houses just behind uh, it. So when you played FIFA, you would see them same houses that were just behind it. It? Mm. it was those little, them little, little, little things, which kind of are just so different to everything else. Yeah. But then you look at Emirates now, <clears throat> a lovely stadium, but it's just a lovely stadium. It's, it doesn't say nothing about... Islington. It doesn't say nothing about English football. It could be a stadium anywhere in, in the world, and that, that what makes me just go. Mm. That, I mean, I'll, I'll put that back to the yin and yang, isn't it? The yin and yang, black and white, the good and the bad, bad and the good. Yeah. It's almost like you make it good, but there's that element of bad where you know you miss that heritage, you miss the history, you miss the feeling of nostalgic football. That's why when I do go back to Serbia and people are smoking cigarettes in the ground, no one's sitting in their right seat, you know. There's concrete everywhere. There's graffiti. Let's saying go back to, only let's go back to stab each other. Like you're like this is this is different. Yeah, but go back to Milan for the cha- you know? Champions League final. Yeah. yeah. How I mean, this is oh, one of the iconic right? oh. stadiums in world football. Yeah. 
the seats were uncomfortable. Mm. The toilet was half a mile away. Yeah. <laughs> and just and the beer wasn't even beer. Mm. God, I was drinking then. It wasn't January. Yeah. But, the, <laughs> but it was kind of like, I'm, I'm here for the Champions League final. Yeah in an iconic stadium and it is bloody uncomfortable mm. I wouldn't want to come here every week and be True. as uncomfortable but so then arguably you say we need to make people comfortable at, at the game otherwise we're going to get a different crowd who will not come well actually we won't get the crowd who won't come so where's They'll the compromise somewhere. well this is it yeah, exactly. I mean, do, do you, you, do you change it? the seating in, in Milan and put a couple of decent toilets nearer the uh, near where people are sat to make the same stadium work better I think Chelsea's a good model to look at. I remember watching mm, 96, right. 97 Arsenal 3 round. at Chelsea and it, were, it was under construction mm. literally as we were playing. Mm. And then I remember years forward, I mean, Mourinho's gone there and you can see the structure of it has developed but you're still going Chelsea. You don't think for one second you're not and going feels, Chelsea. Feels similar. It's just Gradually still... Building, mm, building. Mm. Yeah, but, but it's still... I, asked, I, I remember going Chelsea 96, 97 and I went Chelsea the other day and although it's a different feeling in the sense of a younger crowd and all of that, mm. there is still that sense of, you know, mm-hmm. that authentic, like, yeah, I'm going to a Chelsea game. I don't know how West Ham West Ham fans feel. They must feel devastated. Devastated. That was um, horrible, that ground. You can't alienate fans and then just try and create a brand new thing that's happening. It's hard, that isn't it? no one recognises from before. You're alienating, like, the people that were there from the start, the mm. heritage. heritage can't I've, had this, yeah, I've had this conversation before. I mean, my, <clears throat> my thing about... The state, it depends on your team and what your team does. So okay. if Arsenal haven't won the league since they moved to the new stadium, mm. if Arsenal win the league, mm. then the stadium becomes better somehow because they've done it at that stadium mm. and it's the new journey in a sense or a, a positive journey. West Ham's Sam's the same. Oh, terrible ground, terrible ground in the early days, right bang in the early days. Mm. A few good results and people talk about the atmosphere changing. Man City was another one. Mm-hmm. So Main I road. played at Main Road did you? Oh yeah, of course you did. Main Road looked cool, man. FA Youth, we're on the FA Youth Cup. Nine, did that one weird stand in the left. Yeah, Main Road could have changed though. Like, who was it? Like, yeah. Main Road. <laughs> but well, do, you know, do you know, prior, to, prior yeah. to the Premier League, the, I'm, I'm joking, the record attendance for a top flight game in England, league game, was Manchester United hmm. at Main Road. No way. Go on, Main Road. Okay. Sorry, I used to read stat books. So, uh, Main Road, used they to go read to stat the books. record books and stuff. Oh, cool. oh Panini stickers. Oh, I've oh. World Cup, I collect them. So the old one, they used to go in there and it'd have like all the stats Facts. on the team, record attendance, highest win, lowest, blah, 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 whatever. But um, Main Road, so you went there and then I, I was signed for Man City. I'm in a taxi and the uh, guy says, I said, what's the new stadium like? And he's gone, oh, terrible. So why is that? He said, split all the fans up. You know, all the singers. Mm. You know, it's all the uh, so you know, I can't understand it and all that. And I said, well, surely the, the performances will dictate the atmosphere rather than the fans having to generate the atmosphere. Anyway, so the first season, we um, I signed in January. So we, we played Man United, beating 4-1. Fucking hell, the noise. And I was thinking, I thought back to the taxi driver. It was like, what's he on about? It was so, so loud. Mm. But that was Man City beating Man United. Mm. And therefore, the, the success in itself creates atmosphere. So atmosphere. Arsenal win the league. Yeah, and no, though. Suddenly, was, Emirates is a fantastic stadium. I know some City fans that just still don't like the atmosphere. You're never going to please everyone. But that's a one off game. That's the Manchester derby. Like, you'd probably be motivated to play that in Hackney Marshes. Like, I think that's a different situation. You're talking over the course of time. PSG fans are not happy with the atmosphere right now. It's very Hollywood. And I think that if as long as you've got people that have got something to compare it to, which is a completely different experience, mm-hmm. and on top of that, you can just watch global football. Look, I use Serbia as an example. And you're speaking about India. When you take a look at atmospheres like that and then you actually go out and feel them. I remember World Cup 2014, hearing like 60,000 people scream Messi after he scored against Bosnia. Like I've never felt anything like that before. Mm-hmm. And I've been going to football in England for several years and it's like, there is somebody that could say to me, possibly, in the 70s or the 80s, you did have elements of that, but as much as the game develops in this country, and as much as it moves away from the heritage, I just think we're getting to this point where it's just a bit... Am well, I missing out on something here? Bland. Is this heritage? Is this yeah. like sign See, the heritage thing is poet made a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is it? When you have a belly, in it? Yeah, like, you're old guys and you get old like, and you get belly. You've, you've got a heritage belly. A heritage it's belly. It's heritage... <laughs> 
Like it has <laughs> memories. You can speak about this belly. Oh, heritage. There's belly. heritage in there. There's heritage like, in your belly. You're so not fat. You've when just I'm, got when heritage. I'm in India, yeah, you're not fat. When I'm in India next week doing TV. Yeah. And I talk about the FA Cup stuff. I'm going to go, yeah, I remember back 2008. Heritage. heritage. Yes, <laughs> you have to. You know those guys that are slim and they just got a belly? I'm like, heritage. You're like, that is You're just holding heritage oh, in there. There's man. stories. You know what I mean? Heritage? No? Okay. Now, going back to the point, it, and there is an argument that we have the, the well, it's not an argument, it's we've got the most popular league in the world. Yeah. Premier League. Extremely, it's arguable, but not much of an argument that we've got the. Is it an argument? The highest wage bill. Yep. In league football in the world, I see. Wow, we must have, mustn't we? Yeah. And in the end, there is there is an argument how how solid it is that therefore the ticket price. Because if you go to Serbia, I'm sure they're not right. charging you sixty pound for a ticket. Well, Champions League this time they were sadly, but corruption, but <laughs> but normally no. allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah, but normally, normally, no, normally, it's quite cheap. Yeah, yeah, India's cheap. Mm. Yeah. You know, have a cheap, cheap tickets. You're going to fill houses, arguably. Mm. Then you create the atmosphere. But if the tickets on, and if the ticket issue is supplying the the salary chain, um, then it makes sense they have to make the grounds more mm. financially viable. They must and you can't do that. It's all nuanced, though, isn't it? The, the argument isn't black and white. It's very grey. Like it's a grey yeah. area, but, isn't it? Uh, Hitting the right tone. Put it this way, yeah. in 20 years' time, a lot of the people who are complaining about the nostalgia... Heritage. Heritage. Oh, what's nostalgia? No, I'll just, just keep it nostalgia. Nostalgia. Keep it nostalgia. 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 Can I, can I do nostalgia and heritage? I mean, nostalgia is more like... Oh. Oh. Okay. Reflection. Oh. <laughs> no, but heritage is more like it's a belly, so it's like... Um, a belly's heritage. It implies heritage. A big belly implies heritage. Okay. Heritage. Right. The 20 years time, the people putting forward this argument pro- possibly, probably won't be into watching football going to games anyway. You reckon it'll be into just like Amazon Prime and like yeah, the, the, the VAR Yeah, the, the demographic will shift. Virtual technology. But what yeah. would that do to the game? Because I feel like if you don't have, if it's on the ground level, if it's not being like celebrated and appreciated, what happens is people just lose interest because the pe- we are what makes the game. Like Everyone that goes to the game. Yeah, but your, 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 your age puts you in that sort of on the cusp. Well, like in the middle. You understand a bit of the old school mm. and yeah. you can see what's happening. Mm. The middle child. The older guys will... will yeah. my The younger generation, 18, 19 year olds now, I would mm. argue... Well, it's not even an argument. Yeah. They don't know the heritage stuff. Yeah. They haven't experienced it. They haven't got the They might yet. have been told about it. I was told about the Maracana in uh, what's the world record? One hundred twenty-four thousand or two hundred thousand Argentina versus no, uh, Uruguay versus Brazil. Mm. Well, we're never going to get that again, are we? But the yes, problem is, why is the game change? Yeah, exactly. The game but changes, and we England, like what though. we we get used to. This um, is just England, though. These kids have Instagram. These kids have Twitter. They can just go and look at the Glasgow. Uh, Rangers Celtic match just the other day, and they can see him at atmosphere. Right, I, they I'll can even you, go there if they want. I'll show you a video of the seventy thousand Indian fans. Do you know what I'm coming from? But that's happening yeah, but today. Yeah, it's never going to replicate being that. And that's the difference. The people you're yeah, talking about... It won't replicate, about, it, won't replicate yeah. it, man. No, I think in you, England, been, it'll never happen. You've been to Highbury. Post, you've been to Highbury, man. Oh, that's what I say. You I think in England, I think it's not going to happen. But in Germany, oh, football is still great. Like, huh? Football is still great in Germany. In Italy, the fans are still going... Man. I just think it's a problem for England. I think it's a massive problem for England. They are genuinely losing... Intra- like, Arsenal games are thing. empty, bro. Games yeah, health and safety empty. is a big thing. <laughs> yeah, like in Italy, Spain, so health and safety isn't that big of a thing, mm. bro. It's just I, I, I can't really put an argument forward with regards to Germany other than watching on telly. Mm. Um, I think the other thing, which is which is interesting, and in the fact that I work out in India and Asia a lot doing mm. TV stuff, is that Crystal Palace, for example, could turn around theoretically mm. and say, well, actually, we the money that we generate isn't just from bums on seats. It's because we are now part of a global audience mm. and we can generate money in Asia, however they're going to do that, because there's probably more people in Asia watching Crystal Palace matches than are in England. True. Mm. So therefore, it's kind of, well, actually, the people in the ground, it's nice to have, you know, it's better to watch a game full of people than it is empty. Yeah. Mm. It doesn't matter what standard, what level. Um, but then if you're only going to get people in by doing it cheap, then you have to make the money somewhere else. So Crystal Palace could be a... Good, good test case, I reckon. Mm. 
Crystal Palace, are, they have a good atmosphere. A they really, do, really good they atmosphere. do. They're trying to build something a bit more heritage with the fans. Oh, yeah, yeah go on, fans. Little ultra section. Do you know what I mean? World War the Three, ultras. though. Uh, yeah, World War Three. It's going to happen. Zombie World War Three. Yeah. Interesting about ultras. So I went out, Ooh, yeah. went out to Switzerland. Yeah. Luzerne. Luzerne, yeah. And um, Love it. when was it? Last year, year before? Year before? Loser. Uh, who played? Yeah, it was, it was year before, wasn't it? It was in um, Swiss Super League, whatever. And uh, <coughs> we got to the stadium. I'd been at a, a do the night before, uh, UEFA thing. And the guy said, um, what are you doing tomorrow? I said, I'm going to Luzerne. He said, oh, I'm a financial chairman of Luzerne Football Club. Come to the match. So I went to the game anyway. Meet him outside and he's, he's in a panic. I'm like, what's up? And he's gone. They, they were playing <coughs> young boys or some local, quite local team, one of the big boys. They're a good team. And he went, yeah. He said, their ultras have gone missing. First thing I'm thinking, ultras, right, problematic. They would uh, put a train on for them to come to Luzerne and they didn't get on the train. So like, there's thousands, two or 3,000 ultras running around Luzerne somewhere. And I'm thinking, right, okay, cool. Don't know where I am. Let's get in the stadium. We get in the stadium. The fans had gone in behind one of the goals because they didn't like the little pen they had. Anyway, no problems at all. No violence, nothing at all. Um, but Luzerne was interesting because they have their own ultras. Passionate, dressed yeah, yeah. in black, you know, flares and all that stuff. And uh, I said, you know, what's it like with the ultras? He said, they don't give the club any money at all. They pay for tickets, but they don't buy shirts, don't buy merchandise which actually cripples the fan, uh, the club in a lot of, a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the ultras do have, to be fair, a lot of power in, in let's say, Italy, Serbia, etc. And mm-hmm. in, in a way, you could say they run the club in many ways. But it's just funny how the yeah. most passionate fans don't buy shirts. Mm, yeah, <coughs> ultras is, yeah, it's, it's a different, totally different mentality, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and then all of a sudden, again, it goes back to this thing, you know, Liverpool, apparently, was it Adidas? Nike. Nike, yeah. Nike. Well, that's going to allow them to sell millions and millions of shirts abroad for people who will never go to Anfield mm. well that's going to earn the money isn't it so in a sense the Crystal Palace argument is can we sell shirts abroad then we don't need bums on seats Jesus I rest Christ. my case that's it's a good case a solid case yeah. what were we talking about earlier we were talking about psychology you were going to do a psychology degree I started one. Oh, okay and why did I stop <laughs> <laughs> why did I stop why did I stop? Why did he stop? Why did I stop? Oh, no, no I know why I stopped, yeah. No, I was, I was doing economics. <laughs> Ronaldo oh, video economics and <laughs> psychology? No, or? I started economics. Oh, I started economics? Yeah, I started economics, right, oh. uh, on the Open University. Okay. Um, which is good, but problematic in the same sense because it takes so long. So I started economics and then uh, done a load of modules, don't know how many credits I'd got. Hundred and something credits, and it went on to differentiation, maths. Oh, I hate that. I, hate I thought, maths. yeah, I know maths. I'm right. Page one, yeah, algebra, whatever it was. Then page two, different. I was like, it was, you know, that glazed look. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, no, I'm not going to do it. I just left it. I didn't. I didn't even reply to an email for about a month or so, two, three months, mm-hmm. whatever. And I got an email through saying you haven't replied. You haven't done anything. Do you still want to do the course? I said, no, I don't get it. So I'm, I'm leaving it. And they said, well, you, you can change your course. So I thought I'd do psychology. Um, one of the modules was uh, therapy. Oh. Yeah. Different types of therapy. <sighs> don't get it. <laughs> Didn't get it? No. No, it was too many different types of therapy. It was like any problem you had, there was a therapy for it. <laughs> it's kind of like, hang on it. Do we do humanistic? Do we do Freud? And do we do CBT? All of that stuff. Yeah, I, I think it, all of them can work for the right person, but you can arguably spend your whole life looking for the right one. Oh God! <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. I've got six different therapies here. They requ- recommend that I do three years each to find out if I'm the right person for it. Oh God! By the time you found out, it's time to go. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> so- the end of After my three journey, years, yeah. do, do you think this is right or no? You better try another one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So you were doing psychology and you stopped. Yeah, because the, the there's a global there's a sort of global sense. Uh-huh. Now most people, 
are right-handed, for example, yes. which is great. But I don't know if either one of you are right-handed. Yeah, we're right-handed. But yeah. I can argue that there's there's a chance you are because most people are right-handed. And it's like the general bit's nice in conversation, but being a little bit pedantic about stuff, I want to know well, you're right-handed or you're right-handed, then it becomes individual, and then all of a sudden I'm spending all my time with individuals. And I just, I thought there's better things to do, like paint people. Mm, my darling. Mm. Yeah, thank you. And then yeah. you stopped. I mean, you've led a, led a very. It's, it's just a, yeah. I just like you, man. You're Thank just you. I like yeah. you too. That's why I'm here. Thanks. Yeah, true. You probably wouldn't be here if you didn't like us. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd be somewhere else. <laughs> I could oh. be anywhere else. <laughs> was you like this when you was playing as well? <laughs> yeah. Just this much of an individual. Yeah. Which, that is lit. They must have not understood what was going on. Well, it, it's. It, I've always found it funny because the the game is, again, team sport, and it transcends just the the eleven. It goes into the squad and mm. everything else. Um, I'm a very I'm a team player. You know, I will give a hundred percent for the team, no matter what team mm. it is. Um, but at the end of the day, you've got to respect I'm an individual as well, and I have my individual needs. So, the team thing, you find sort of going through careers that people are footballers and they kind of their, their individual status is almost global in a way it's kind of I'm part of this industry is mm. and it's part of me rather than you look at it and you say then it's a well said verse that <coughs> an injury can end your career well if you look at it then you become an individual because once you're injured you aren't part of the team anymore so every place I've been has always had to be I'll do everything for you until the point I have to go somewhere else and then you become very transient. And once you're transient, holding on to friends and sort of keeping those relationships is very difficult. So, you know. Mm. <gasps> the We're nearing the end. We have 10 minutes left. That makes sense. Oh, this sense. is timed? <clears throat> no, not relatively timed. But I think eventually the batteries run out. And then like... Ah, oh, 10 minutes of battery. Or maybe... If you didn't have a Callum, battery, an app oh. with it telling you how long the battery yeah. lasts, you have a bit more battery oh, in the car. Or Callum maybe hasn't, I don't know, <laughs> emptied the memory cards or something like that. And then eventually... Oh, we... No, 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 don't pay me in the battery. <laughs> I don't know I'm guessing I'm just guessing I have to cancel the meeting as well you reckon yeah because I've got another meeting after that okay. so yeah that kind of individual bit sort of takes over so yeah was I like that all the time and was I misunderstood probably yeah because mm. you, people want you to be part of their bigger picture the last year actually said one, we're in the shower <laughs> <laughs> last year last year <laughs> yeah. yeah we're in the shower and he's gone do you know what? You're actually pretty good in his French accent. I thought, thanks for that, mate. Pretty good at what? As a goalkeeper. Oh, is it? It was, but it was the way he said it. It was kind of like, you must have thought I was really shit. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, okay, cool. All right. You just drive around in your Bentley convertible around Portsmouth, one of the poorest places in England. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> I saw him in New York the other day. Yeah. I was probably the only one that recognised him. Mad. He was also with Shaggy. Well, he wasn't with Shaggy. Shaggy what also happened to be in the same venue. Me and Chunks. It was like, oh my God, is that Diara? I was like, and he's like, Shaggy? <laughs> Shaggy and Diara. What a wonderful world. Sorry. Yeah, that's the end of the story. What a wonderful movie. Yeah. That's what a wonderful life. I mean, you're, you're doing your thing as an individual, as a human. You did yeah, like charity work I've got, I've well. got an idea. Now, I don't know how many of your viewers and whether you're going to put this on there. So, this... Uh, this climate change oh hello Ooh, environmental stuff okay Greta Greta Greta, Greta. Greta. oh is this the young girl that flies around the world telling people that to stop using stuff like Swedish planes girl. yeah <laughs> so she flies around the world to tell she people to stop took, using she took planes. a boat once yeah. Ibra Sun okay she boats were some planes by the way okay anyway carry on what did you going to say I always find this interesting I was watching the news once hmm. not re quite recently oh the uh, Greenland ice caps are melting the glaziers are melting. We sent one of our reporters over there. I'm thinking, what? Did he swim? <laughs> so if it's right for a reporter to jump on a plane to go to Greenland, then we're all entitled to jump on a plane at least once. I agree. No, I agree Planes with you. Planes are part of the problem. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I... Problem with melting ice caps or glaziers in Greenland. We phoned up a guy local and he told us what the problem was because the phone's not causing so much of a problem. Anyway. Mm. So, um, yeah, I'm looking into uh, some... Some environmental stuff. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit tricky at the moment. Ooh. It's all to do with plants. Because plants 
obviously uh, zero cycle turning plants into fuel mm-hmm, trying mm-hmm. to do it in a way that it doesn't become a business oh which is tough because it's capitalism yeah that's the thing the industry yeah the the plants i'm thinking about i'm not going to say it out loud but they're global oh it's global it's already, it's already been done i'm not invented anything but oh. it's kind of uh it's a water plant and it's about local communities being able to harvest literally harvest this plant certain plants create fuel so mm. they don't have to chop down trees okay um, because they use tree, obviously wood for, for fuel. They could use a plant fuel. I have a feeling I know what plant you're talking about. Go on then. If you get it right. Marijuana? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> a water plant. Oh, I thought you said water. Do you water it? Well, arguably all, all plants. Right. Right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what's and a watered plant? I've got some watered plants. Yeah. Wait, what's a watered plant? There's a plant a in plant the plant that lives on water. <gasps> There's a plant that lives on water? Yeah. Cool. Oh, it lives in water. Do you think I should say? No, don't say it, don't say it. Well, should, I, should, I, should I say? Don't say it, because they're, they're going to No, 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 because my, my thing is, right, there's, there's two points to this. One is it could be one of the greatest ideas in the world. Well, is Some it your idea? Jump. Right, so the, it's called a water hyacinth. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, the water hyacinth is a, obviously a uh, water-based plant. There's an oil in it, which you can use for fuel. Oh. And in parts of Africa and part, other parts of the world, people have harvested it, turned it into fuel for cooking. Well, I think if you can harvest, and it, it basically, it, it bad for the ecosystem of rivers because it blankets the river, which means that photoception doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. And also it, when it breaks down, it kills stuff off. Anyway, <clears throat> you then dry out the plant and then the dried out plant becomes a fuel source. This means you don't have to chop trees down or use oil from the ground. Um, if you use the actual fuel, in the drying process or the uh, the drying out process, then you can produce steam, which then produces water. And I'm not plagiarizing Bill Gates because it's something he does with shit in slums yeah, now. Heard, yeah. yeah. So in a sense, you can produce fresh drinking water and fuel from a plant, which is a pest on rivers in and around the world. Wow. <laughs> I can see why you were such an individual. If that's but it's it's an idea. Mm. Right, the, the main thing about it is how you harvest it. Mm. And I don't know how many plants you need to produce how much fuel. Mm. Um, judging by what I saw one guy doing on YouTube, it wasn't a massive amount. But I, there's a boat, and it, the friend that made me laugh, there's a boat in America. That, and I, I said to my missus, I went, I'm sat there and I've gone, I'm in Hong Kong. This would, I'd stop playing PUBG on for half an hour. And I've drawn this picture of a boat and gone, that's the boat. Basically, it's scoops up the plant crushes it down it was a bit of an ex- extra- extravagant boat it crushes the plant produces the thing da 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 anyhow went on YouTube this guy's got a similar boat already oh lord have you been in touch with him no 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 but the thing that made me laugh was he went yeah the water hyacinth is blocking the way so I pick it up chuck it on the side and let it like um, Try. break down uh-huh. no he was just getting rid of it out of the water uh, so he doesn't even he use wasn't it. even using it uh... I was thinking Hang on, there's fuel that you're just leaving on the side there. I wasn't expecting this, but you see, you're heading down the environment. I've told you now, I, I, I did, uh, I've been trying to contact, I contacted Bill Gates, his place, emailed them, emailed some other people, didn't get back to me, and I'm thinking, what the fuck? I've got an idea here. Uh, I don't want anything from emailed, it. It's just an idea which you, I think could help the planet. And you emailed Bill Gates? Not him directly. His people. <laughs> for, for the attention of Bill Gates. Well, the, the Bill Gates Foundation does magical things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, The email response was, essentially, we don't deal with that kind of stuff. Oh, fair you enough. have to go through, and you have to go through some system mm. to get funding or grants and all that stuff. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. I just want someone to deal with the problem. I don't want money. I just want someone to go, oh, I'll tell you what, we can do that. Mm. You wow. do a lot of charity work, don't you? In terms of, I have done. You yeah. have done a lot, haven't you? What area? Agriculture. Set up a foundation in Malawi, mm. which was which was similar. We, uh, oh, I love this story. <coughs> England FA. Everyone batters the FA, but they they did some stuff. Uh, Two thousand five went out to Malawi. Uh, HIV AIDS awareness campaign. Hmm. Do you know anything about the HIV AIDS or, yeah, um, issues in virus. sub-Sahara? I don't know. It's huge. Huge. So Basically taken out a whole generation. Oh, Jesus Or the best part of a generation. Mm. Yeah, and this generation are the farmers, the you know, young men, women, whatever. Mm. And uh, we were out there, and our campaign was to tell people to 
essentially practice safer sex mm. and all that stuff. I'm thinking, why do they want to look at English footballers telling them about something they live with? Excuse me. Um, we, we did what we needed to do. Uh, we spoke to who we needed to speak to. Speak to. Um, I've never been in my life before. I didn't know anything about it. But the one thing that struck me when the Red Cross charity worker showed me a map, I went, that's a big river, big lake. She went, yeah, it's a fifth of the country. It's called the Calendar Lake, 365 miles long by 52 miles wide. Mm. I said, why don't they just irrigate the lake and then they could all eat? And this conversation went on for three days. And on the third day, third night, the guy used to be the um, head of agriculture for Malawi. I said to him, what about Lake Malawi? Irrigate, and he went, if South Africa owned Malawi, that's what they do, there wouldn't be a starvation issue. Because starvation, lack of nutrition and starvation is one of the things that um, causes HIV AIDS to, to, to develop quicker. Healthier people don't contract the, the illness or the mm. disease. So we set up this foundation anyway. Um, my farm went out there, spoke to people, educating them on how to grow better plants, better uh, produce, blah, blah, blah. It was nice. So you, that's like a direct involvement of yours you got involved in. Yeah, well, I, I, I had an idea. Yeah, I phoned up my mate. Oh, cool. I, phoned, I got back from a lie and I went, Nick, got an idea. Because the English farmers were basically being told not to farm. Government subsidies and all that stuff mm. meant that they couldn't do what they wanted to do, which was farm. I said, I've got an idea. Why don't you, uh, or you get your farmers who aren't farming just to go out to Malawi for a little while, educate some farmers, blah, blah, blah. He went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, given I'd only met this guy once, <laughs> Nick, he, he phoned me back a week later and he went, Dave, I've had a chat with the family. We're prepared to move out there for two years. <laughs> well, I went, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's a little bit more than I planned on. Anyway, cut a long story short. Nick went out there, educated some guys. We did some really good stuff. And uh, some people out there didn't want it to get any further. So. Ah, so eventually. Uh, yeah. stop it. Corruption, allegedly. It's interesting when you ask someone or tell them that, or suggest to them, shall I say, that they've given the country millions and millions of dollars or pounds. Could you hold some back and give them something else, i.e. farmers? And they say no. We give it to them in good faith. Mm, so money. Another conversation. It seems like the battery's running out. The battery is running out, <laughs> but that you see. I think you're full of stories that we haven't even fully uncovered. But Vuj, for, I don't think you heard what just happened. <laughs> I met a man once. I've told him an idea. He goes, I've been there for two years. <laughs> for two years. So you went out there for two years, your mate. <laughs> now we. I put him off. Oh, I put him off. Oh, oh, that's amazing that is yeah you're full of stories and uh, thank you for joining us our batteries DJ, and cars are running out it wasn't true that because you you blamed EA named this as one of their greatest moments that you blamed gaming on your like when you had some bad form in Liverpool and you said it was is it oh you got enough time for the battery to get me an answer just yeah quick uh, right so what happened was and I've already explained this with PUBG oh yeah in right, India I'm, you started I'm capable, PUBG yeah. I'm capable of doing stuff religiously yeah. Almost. Yeah. Doesn't mean that I've got a problem. No, I'm just... Yeah, it's just the way I am. Um, and what I said was that my friend Colin Jackson, who was an athlete, his mate, his, his coach basically said, do not do gaming on a match day or a game day uh, because it takes away your nervous energy. Ooh. So my thing was, I think at that time, I'd been playing lots of... Um, Were you playing? What game was it then? It wasn't FIFA because I didn't like it. I couldn't stand the fact that these guys weren't doing what humans are supposed to be doing. They're tripping over each other and the fastest player always just get caught up by one of the slow ones. It was really annoying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's annoying. I that was annoying. Annoying. They, they changed it now. The pro, pro evolution. Uh, the guy sort of stutters. It's like, just run around him. Anyway. The, uh, what was it? Final Fantasy. Final, seven. Final Fantasy. Seven. My bro, I was a Addicted three, Final three Fantasy discs. VII. Three discs, bro. Right, so in Phil, a double disc like that. Phil, Phil, Phil Bab said to me, because we, we're going through the magazines, Phil Bab goes, you're not getting this, are you? It is just... Just, right, Phil Bab goes, yeah, I was reading um, PlayStation Mag or something and someone completed Final Fantasy in 60 hours. I was like, bang. I was on 42 hours. I was on, I was on disc three. Disc three, and then I, I think I got called to go with England, so I missed it for a week. And then got home and was like, don't play that anymore. Because <laughs> you so you wanted to beat the sixty like, hours. Yeah, you're so competitive. So you did forty two like hours. Off and I was like, nah, play something else now. Tekken. 
Oh, so you're was dark. Absolutely. So that was my argument. My argument wasn't that I was addicted and I had a problem. It was just I was told that it wasn't the best thing. You wanted me. to overcome the challenge, yeah. and and I told a mate. In com- I did. It was a friend of mine who did the interview, and I actually asked him to take it out because I thought it wasn't didn't need to be in there. And he went, "No, oh, it's too late." It's in now, isn't it? It's too it's late. this convo. Oh, it's yeah. too late. Is that this convo? It's too late now. Pretty <laughs> it's much. part of heritage. In fact, it's part of the heritage mm, now, YouTube heritage. heritage. But thank you for being a, you know, one of our footballing mates. One and of your oldest yeah, we viewers. We go way back. We had a deep philosophical chat once. We didn't even go into philosophy, but we had a deep yeah. philosophical chat in the back of a, of a coach full of YouTubers, KSI. Everybody was there. It was my birthday, Champions yeah. League final. And then, yeah, we've all stayed in touch. And obviously... We all get along, and thank you. On philosophy, one quick one. Go Check on. the uh, philosophy on when a when it when what becomes a heap. And what becomes a heap? Imagine you got a million grains of sand. You take one off a heap Ooh. of sand. So if I just Google take that, one grain of sand off at a time. When does it stop becoming a heap? Hmm. Anyway, don't worry about. It. So that is lit. Wait, what's it called? How to become a heap? <laughs> How to become a heap? When you what? When you become ten, a- ten stages of becoming a heap. No, but what, was um, the, what was this thing? Ph- philosophy on heaps or something like that. Philosophy. I read it in a book. I didn't see. The good thing that. is we filmed it, Vuj. So even if we that's did a good it, point. Go I'm here writing it down. Yeah, <laughs> we could have just watched it back. And- <laughs> oh, Black Mirror. Oh, Black Christmas. Mirror. Great in it. I like a bit of Black Mirror. Black Mirror jokes in it, bro. Look, oh, this could go oh, a few right, hours. Sorry, sorry, just sorry. Look, you need to go. We need to go. But thank no, you. No, I, I feel like you're chucking me out now. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> no, 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 no. Can no, him, tell no, him. I'm not. I'm not. When, the cards when, are full. The yeah, cards when, are when full. When anyone says we need to go, it basically means you need to go. <laughs> nah, the cards are full. I'll, I'll just carry on. Are, are you off now? No, no, it's still going. Just. Bro, J- David, you know we could continue with you yeah. for hours. I, I've got it. I've got to go. <laughs> no, that's the maddest thing, isn't it? We could probably continue like this for two seconds. It sounds like an Eddie Howe moment. This does. <laughs> David, thanks for being here. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to like wrap it up because obviously I don't know if the camera is gonna. Oh, we love you, man. Thank you very much. Thanks for the painting. I need a picture of you so I can paint you. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So next time, can you come and bring a, a painting of poet? Word up. Word up. Can String. we take a picture of this moment because we haven't been doing it recently yeah. and it's really. We have annoying. to. We have to. Ah, oh, I just love you, man. Word up. Thank you for watching. Did, was this Nescafe? Gold blend. Yeah. <gasps> Do you know what? I could detect there was a...